Hello and welcome to another episode of Red Dot Forum Camera Talk. As always, I am David Farkas. I'm joined by Josh Lair. Hey, everyone. And we've got over there in a little box down down there, mm -hmm. uh, Jose Rivera producing the show. Say hello, Jose. <laughs> We're waiting for you, bro. We're waiting on you, man. <laughs> We're good. All right. Um, so uh, we actually just had our last episode last weekend. No. But nobody saw it oh, here right. on oh, the YouTube. I see, I see. Yes. Right? Because we did it live for our 10-year uh, Like a Store anniversary party, right? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, that was that was good. We had, we had a lot of... Uh, yeah, we had a great turnout. Yeah. Like, obviously, we have to thank everybody who, who came and participated mm -hmm. and asked questions. We had fun. It was really cool. It was great. Yeah, it was great. It was awesome. And maybe uh, in 10 more years, we'll do it again. Maybe we will. <laughs> 20 years. That's right. right. Here. Come for the, if you do this to 10, you, well, we'll do a 15, probably. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But anyway, All so right. what are we talking about today? Well, the fact that we are switched... That means that this is a one of Josh's nerdy comparison because episodes. I need and I need to do some test pictures. Yes. We're going to do some live shooting. Josh is going to show stuff on the computer. Mm -hmm. But what are we going to show and what are we testing? Today's episode is all about two lenses that Leica released a couple of weeks ago. They are two additions to the SL lineup. It is a 35 Summicron SL ASPH and 50 Summicron SL ASPH. These are smaller, lighter, lower priced SL prime lenses that complement the existing lineup of primes and zooms. And now, just to get one thing out of the way, we do realize that the 100-400 came out this week. We haven't yes. gotten one yet, so we no. can't incorporate that into this episode. People kept asking us like... Well, and, and actually when we were setting up this live stream a few days ago, we didn't know that lens was, <laughs> it was on even the coming, way. Yeah. Right. So, uh, sorry, the crystal ball was broken that day, and uh, it would have been really cool to do a full roll-up of of all the, the three new SL mm. zooms, or, or rather, three but SL we'll lenses. Do, we'll do an episode on that lens once we get yeah. one and have time to, yeah, to do play our testing. with it and do our testing. So. And it's going to be very different testing. Yes, that is true. Um, so for now, this show is dedicated to, to the two new Summicron SLs right that there. came out. I forget it. Yeah. Has it been two weeks now? Something like Something that. Something like that. But anyway, so the goal for tonight is to talk about the lenses, to show them, and of course, to talk about how they compare to a few select choices that we felt made logical sense. Other things um, on this table. Yes, large objects here. Yes. So do you want to give us, David, just an overview of the lenses and their basic specs? Yeah, if for sure, can, for sure. Shoot, we'd like to do that. So why don't we do a little close-up thing? Sure. Which no, I want to start. I want to start with the thirty-five. All right, and we'll start with the with the hood on. Mm -hmm. There it is. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So it looks a lot like a Leica lens. And uh, Jose, you want to pop me in there? Can you do we're that? gonna tr we're gonna try. Wait, you can do. Oh, hey, there I am. That's, that's right. trippy. I like that. That's trippy. All yeah. right, so it's kind of like lensception right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm taking the hood off, and it is a nice metal shade. You guys hear that? I doubt it. Maybe. Just take our word for it. It's metal. It's it's pretty nice. It's yeah. shiny. Yeah. And uh, the lens is remarkably light. I mean, it really, it's really really light. Yeah. I think that's the first thing you notice when you pick this thing up. Uh, we've got a weight of what? You got the uh, 300 and I actually weighed the, all these lenses. The yeah. actual weight with no hood is 365 grams. 365. What is that in uh, I, ounces? Yeah, ounces. I don't know. Google it. <laughs> you can Google it on your own. Uh, <laughs> I was saying Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I got ask Siri. No, that'll screw everything up. No, no, no. Anyway, so it is approximately half the weight. Wait, wait, hold on. What was that, Jose? 0.80 pounds. Well, how many ounces? How many ounces? Two ounces. Hold on. Wait, if it's 0. 0.8, that's going to be... 12.87. There you go. So just about 13 ounces or half the weight of the Apple Summicron SL35, just right. about, which is around 700 grams. Yeah. And uh, you can see there, yes, it's an L mount, full frame, if, if that even was a question. Uh, it, it's, again, remarkably small and light. And this, like... And it uses a 67 millimeter yeah. front diameter, similar to the Apple Summicrons. Well, not so, similar, same as. Same as. <laughs> same <laughs> yeah, as. Same. Yes. Uh, and uh, we just have a focus ring, and that's it, because it is an SL lens. And like all the other SL lenses, it is weather sealed, it is. dust sealed, um, Aquadura coatings on the front and back with sort of like a hydrophobic um, coating. Indeed. And 
That's um, it. Yeah. That's All right. pretty much it. So let me show the 50. So here is the 50. Put that one down. And we can see that it looks remarkably similar to the 35. <laughs> Same specs. Uh, this one's a little bit heavier. What is the uh, the grammage That's on this funny. one? I, I, I was trolling you, but oh, I, I took some out. I put Sigma rear caps on these lenses because oh, gosh. <laughs> it's so many funny notes right away. Look at that. I did that on purpose. Oh. I thought it would, I thought it would be hilarious, but I apparently was. Well, I noticed that. I was like, these are a little bit flatter than typical <laughs> Leica L mount. Oh, I, my God. I, I didn't think anyone that. noticed that that quickly. Wow. Um, this is a, just a... Um, That's a little dig. It gives right you an there. idea of the theme of this show, just so you can be prepared for that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this is the 50. Evil Josh. Evil Josh. And the 35. Both yep. both extremely light, although the 50 is a little bit heavier. What, yeah, what's our grammage on that one? The 50 is going to be 368 grams. Three grams, David? You can tell that? That's I can. Right. Okay. I'm very You're sensitive. Very sensitive. Very sensitive. Well, very what, sensitive. Is, what is the real party trick specifically to the 35? What does that lens do that's, that's unique? What it does amazingly well yeah. is focus, I mean, I would say stupidly close, <laughs> like <laughs> macro level close. Uh, and you'll see that when we do our live setup. I actually had to move everything closer so i'm not laying flat on the table trying to reach yeah it is and i think still the the live view setup which just at the end of my my fingers right now i can i can just touch oscar the bear's nose it's still too far away i'm going to have to take something from over there put it on the table because it's about this far from the front of the lens yeah jose let, let's put a close-up on that it is that far like that there you go it's that very far. very close it's right if this is my, that's the subject, and here's the lens, that is how close it focuses. It is insane. All right. So, it's pretty nice. I think, and we're going to talk about why that's significant and mm -hmm. why we think this is kind of a unique lens in the in the SL lineup and what, what it could be good for. Yeah. So, these two lenses are the second time that we have seen Leica produce an L-mount lens not at the factory in Germany. So, for reference... Or I should say a full frame L mount lens. But where are they made? Josh? Uh, these lenses are made in Portugal, uh, the 35 and the 50R. The other five primes and six primes and three zooms are made in Germany. Yep. And the 24 to 70, which was introduced 2020 something, uh, um, is made in Japan. So the 20, the 24 to 70 was the first time we saw a a lighter, lower priced L mount mm -hmm. lens not made in Germany. And then we're continuing that with the 35 and the 50. Again, you're not really compromising build quality that we can seal. You're still getting the all metal construction, the weather and dust sealing, the Aquadura coating, mm -hmm. the super smooth focus. Mm -hmm. And in fact, these three not made in Germany lenses come with metal lens hoods, they whereas do. all of the made in Germany ones, or at least the primes, come with plastic lenses, like which this. I find hilarious. And I will mention that the hoods are swappable. Um, I, ha I doubt we'll actually be able to sell the new hoods by themselves. Can We've I, never been able to sell the 24 to 70 it? hood, but David will it? show you that. If can you, I do it? Yes. Okay. If you have the non-Apple Primes and the Apple Primes, you can actually mount um, there we go. the lens hoods on there. So it does, can you get a close-up of that, Jose? Yeah, so is this that? is the 50 Apple SL with the metal hood from the 50 non-Apple SL. So it does fit, it looks cool. It does look cool. Um, but again, I, I don't know if we're ever gonna get to sell these separately. Um, it's certainly on my list to find out. Given that these lenses themselves are still pretty hard to get, it may be a bit before that happens. Um, nice. Anyway, so there are some questions that we know we need to answer. Um, yes. I spent the entire day testing these two lenses against a variety of other lenses, testing um, sharpness um, across the field and in the center, at wide open and stop down, testing a bokeh performance and also autofocus speed. So this will be the first time I think we actually have some yeah. metrics, quasi-scientific metrics of autofocus speed um, on some of these lenses too. Nice. So I think it'll be cool. I literally I too. have so many numbers and spreadsheets and images to show you guys. It's going to be super exciting. Um, you guys love numbers. Right? Exhilarating, in fact. Okay, um, cool. Do you want... Well, how are we going to start this off? I think, well, I think we need to... I think I'd like to address the elephant in the room first. To get that out of the way, so we don't have to keep talking about okay, it the whole let's show. Let's go. Let's go. Which is one of, the, or probably the most asked question that we've received, and also that we see online, is what are these lenses? Because they share a lot of similarities with two Panasonic yes, L mount lenses, which we. Can oh you, my gosh! Can you? How did they show up here? Can you give us a very <laughs> very short explanation of the L mount alliance? Sure. Yeah. It's the L mount alliance. 
Okay. Longer yeah. than that. <laughs> Longer than that. Yes. But shorter than a soliloquy. Yes. Okay. Uh, Element Alliance was formed when a, a, a few things happened. Uh, Panasonic wanted to come out with a full frame mirrorless camera because up until that point, they only had micro four thirds cameras mm -hmm. like the GH4, the GH5. Mm -hmm. They wanted to come out with the camera, which ended up being what the S, S1 and S1R. I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was at Photokina 2018. So at that same show in 2018, uh, Leica announced with Panasonic and Sigma the Elmount Alliance. The idea was, and I guess it kind of sparked when Panasonic said, hey, we see that you have this great L-mount with your SL system, and how would you feel if we licensed that from you for our cameras? And like I said, wow, that's a great idea. In fact, that we got something going here. How about you make lenses that also fit our camera, and let's invite Sigma to the party too. Mm -hmm. So they all got together, formed the L-mount alliance. Uh, Sigma also has the... FP or the F something. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, so they have their own camera as well, but it's not nearly as popular as the SL and the and the Panasonic variants. But Sigma has been really crushing it on lenses. Mm -hmm. uh, Panasonic got a whole line of lenses. And it's the whole idea is that it creates a larger ecosystem. And now you have a camera like the SL where Leica's not a huge, massive company where they can come out with 60 lenses for the camera like yeah. you know, like a, a Canon or a Nikon or a Sony. So by bringing in more partners, they were able to have fill in a lot of those gaps. Like, um, well, there's the, ma the macro lenses, the 70 there's millimeter, the centimeter, telephoto yeah. zooms, and wide one, angles, one, and, one, what, 150 to 600. Yeah, crazy stuff. That, uh, that the, augments. The 14 millimeter, yes. whatever. Yeah. All these different lenses that Leica wouldn't necessarily invest in because there's not a large enough market for the, for the Leica customer. Yeah. So it, ultimately it benefits all of us. It benefits anyone who's an SL user who wants access to a variety of lenses, which uh, is great. So uh, they share, the, share technology mm -hmm. and agree on specs and mm -hmm. they meet on a regular basis to make sure that anything they're coming out with is supported across the whole yeah, and you'll see that with firmware updates that come out from Leica that are supporting other brand lenses exactly. within the Elmount Alliance, exactly. which is super cool. Yeah. So, thank you. Sure. Following up on that, there are a pair of Panasonic Elmount lenses that are, in some ways, quite similar to these new Leica 50 and 35 Elmount lenses. So, move this right here. the question that has been asked, and we'll put them all out here, is... What are the similarities? What are the differences? Are they the same lens? Are they different lenses? Who, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, first and foremost, we need to mention, it's not as if Leica has come out and said with any of their products, oh yes, here's a list of all the partners who made all the parts and where <laughs> right. they all were made and here's who designed this. They don't do that. When Leica sells a Leica product, it is a Leica product. They have a long history of collaborating with other manufacturers like Panasonic and Fuji. Yeah, the Panasonic and, collaboration goes back to 2002. Yeah. And, 20 uh, years. and different sensor manufacturers and, and everyone. So this collaborative concept is not new. No. Um, and everywhere that Leica manufactures products that isn't at the factory in Germany has people from the factory in Germany there in various levels of oversight, making sure that everything that has a Leica dot on it is being produced to their well, standard. Well, I mean, take that even further, yeah. going back, in the Panasonic partnership, they have had Leica branded Panasonic lenses well before the Elmount Alliance. Mm -hmm. And whether that's on Canon professional video cameras, prosumer video cameras, or on you know various lenses that they came out that were Leica branded, those were all with the explicit approval and oversight from Leica. Mm -hmm. Leica wouldn't allow Panasonic to put their name on a lens if it hadn't run by the optics department. Yeah. So this, they have a long history of working together yeah, so, so on every level. It's, you know, Leica is bigger and more mainstream now than they have ever been, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. And I think that's one of the reasons that these collaborations get a lot more scrutinized now. But the reality is that for as long as David and I have been around and longer, yep. these kinds of collaborations have existed. They and are not unusual. So I don't want anyone to freak out that Leica is now doing this. And well, doing and a little esoteric, right? Yes. Going back to the... Uh, oh, this will be a piece of our R-Lens episode. Okay. Going wait, back... wait, wait, what R-Lens episode? <laughs> well, going, going back to R-Lenses. <laughs> yes, yeah. Leica partnered with... Schneider. Schneider. With Minolta yeah. and Sigma even back yep. in the early days. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's really... There was a and Zeiss. And Zeiss. There's yep. a, yeah, exactly. There's a significant amount of decades and decades of historical precedent 
of this kind of collaboration. Now, sometimes like I will say who they're collaborating with these days, not so much. I think that's part of just the global economic nature of a company like sure. like and now just doing stuff everywhere. But we're um, tangenting. So we have on the table the Panasonic 35 and 50 F1.8, whatever they're called. I don't even know the actual name. They're Rubik's. the modern or they're the contemporaries. That's Sigma. What? Yeah, oh. that shows you how much we really oh, know. God. We're not gonna we're not gonna talk out of term because we're not Panasonic experts. So I'm not gonna. These are the S line. The yeah. S line. Okay, perfect. Um, anyway, so visually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over what I have discovered from my from my testing, and Please. then we'll talk about the actual results. Number one, the SL. Would you like lenses. me to hand model for you yeah, while you, you can? Yeah. Uh, the SL lenses are metal bodied, and the Panasonic lenses okay. are plastic bodied. They weigh about okay. 60 to 70 grams less. The Panasonic weighs 60 grams less. The focus feel of the SL lenses feels like an SL lens, so super smooth, super linear, feels like significantly mechanical. The Panasonic's not going to give you quite that same feel. That's subjective to a degree. The Panasonic lens hoods are plastic and have little releases on them. The Leica lens hoods are metal and they just snap right on. You'll notice that the Panasonic lenses also have an autofocus, manual focus switch on them. I'll put that. Um, this is something Leica chooses to do in their menu, either with a menu setting or a um, customizable button. And the reason for that is because that is one more failure point or one more point of uh, ingress for water, dust, moisture, etc. So they don't purposely do not have any switches, dials, or buttons on their lenses um, for Leica. This is something a Panasonic does. Mm -hmm. And, and then how do you, how would you describe this? Uh, the focus feel on these is not great relative to the Leica lenses. I haven't used a bunch of other Panasonic, so I couldn't speak to those yeah, specifically. Ver, yeah, this on the other hand. Yeah, very, very smooth. Oh yeah. yeah, that's like a real, like any other SL lens. And of course, when we talk about manufacturing, the two lenses from Panasonic are manufactured in China and the two lenses from Leica are manufactured in Portugal. So there's definitely a pretty wide gulf in terms of how uh, the countries where these are manufactured. So. Oh, and of course, the big one is the Panasonic lenses are designated f1.8. Mm -hmm. The Leica lenses are Sumicron, designated yep. f2. If you look at the optical designs, from what I can find, they do seem super similar. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. This is much like we talked about with the 24 to 70. Uh, when that came out, where it shares a lot of similarities with the Sigma lens. Yep. But as David and I both know, just because the optical layout of glass may be similar or even identical, doesn't mean that the performance is going to be identical because there's more to lens performance design and construction yes. than just the physical placement of pieces of glass. Yes. In fact, Leica isn't saying if they use different coatings or not, but we can speculate that they might be based on some of our test mm -hmm. results, which mm -hmm. we're going to get to, because there is some there is some measurable significant differences Yeah. Uh, that are more than just tolerances because that, and, and that really is the biggest thing. Even mm -hmm. if these were identical lenses, let's let's posit that for a second. Mm -hmm. If these were identical, the big difference is in manufacturing tolerances. Mm. Uh, and, and often, you know, we talk about this in, in the manufacturing engineering world that you're gonna pay exponentially more for that last nth degree mm -hmm. of precision because precision costs money when it comes to manufacturing. Yeah. The, the tighter your tolerance is, the more precise you want to make it, the harder it is to do it, the the more your failure rate is, reject rate, et cetera, costs go exponentially up. We see that with the Leica Cine lenses because their tolerances are so exacting and so tight, they reject so many uh, optical elements back to their suppliers, and it's very difficult for them to even make one lens at a time, mm -hmm. let alone mass production. But those are also you know, $30,000, $40,000 lenses, right? <laughs> yes. So now we're scaling it back to these lenses, which, and we didn't actually talk about the price of these. How much is a? Uh, I don't even know off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> do, 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 I'll do, tell do, you do, in do, a second. Do, uh, pause for a technical. The 35 is 2,195 US, mm -hmm. and the 50 is 1,895 US. So they both come in around 2,000 bucks US. Okay, so yeah, let's say for, for $2,000, you can certainly buy a lot more precision, but it's going to cost more when you're manufacturing at Leica's facility in Portugal, mm -hmm. which has made M lenses. They make all of the sport optics and they operate at a very high level. Mm -hmm. These are, this is a Leica well, manufacturing I think facility. I should, I should just say this. These are Leica lenses. Yes. These are Panasonic lenses. Ah, look That's at that. what it comes down to. Okay. If I handed you one of each and said, are these lenses the same? You would say no, because they feel they different. Feel different yeah. They look different. They work different. The accessories are different. They're made in countries that are thousands and thousands and thousands of miles <laughs> apart by totally different teams of people, and they're 
sold by different companies. Yeah. Now, if Leica has identified parts of a Panasonic lens that they think can be made to meet their levels of performance, and that saves them enough money to make lenses that cost $2,000 instead so, of $5,000, sure. opening up the L-mount and the SL system to more people, that's fine with me. That's actually fantastic. We also don't know, again, there's a lot that we don't know, right? We mm -hmm. can speculate. Right. We can say, well, what if Leica was originally involved in the development of these lenses to start with, know, yeah. and they consulted on these because they knew they wanted to do this? Yeah. Like, there is that possibility as well. Yeah. And they're not saying because... They don't have to. They don't have to, <laughs> right. Because in the end, what matters to me, at least, is am I using it? Does it do what I needed to do? Does it work well? Is it reliable? Is it fun to use? Does it make pictures that make me happy with my Leica equipment? And that's okay. the crux of all of this, ultimately. I think that's um, fair. So... I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way because I know it's easy to just go online, look at a spec, look at a lens diagram and say, oh my goodness, they're just ripping off this. And it's like, I've just spent the entire day with these four lenses and some more shooting, testing, switching, experimenting. And I have now an appreciable insight into what the differences are and what makes these lenses unique. And again, they're Leica lenses. Not only Leica lenses, they're Leica L-mount lenses. So again, full frame, weather sealed, dust sealed, hydrophobic aquadura coating, mm -hmm. metal lens shades, Fully optimized for the L mount cameras that like it make. Although we didn't bring a CL, did we? I have one outside. Oh, we may try that later. Yeah, if Josh time. is doing computer stuff, I might sneak to, to, to throw yeah. the CL on there to see how it works. Um, Jose. Yes. Uh, if you've been checking the. We've been busy talking. Oh, and yeah. Right. Any and questions we need to answer before we on? get into images? Uh, no, somebody asked about the coatings, and you guys said. I, I, we, we don't know. We're we just know. using yeah, that, our, exactly, my yeah. experiential from testing all these lenses and just my. The fact that they're not made at the same place right. would probably tell me that there is a certain standard that Leica is adhering to that goes above and beyond what Panasonic is doing yeah. in China. Yeah. Hey, there he is. There's a hey. question that says, um, the best part of the Panasonic S lenses is that they're optically focused, breathing corrected. Hmm. Are these new Leica SL lenses also breathing corrected? It's not in the specs. It's not in the specs, but... I, but I think that lends sure. itself to Panasonic's history of video. Mm -hmm. That's quite a bit longer than Leica's. I doubt that was in Leica's list of criteria, but I don't, Probably we not. don't actually know. That's a good question to ask the Germans. That is a great question. Yeah, which we can and find out. Um, um, or we can... We, yeah. we can say yes. that based on the performance of what we already discussed, mm -hmm. uh, we do think these would be excellent for video, especially mm -hmm. the 35, especially for the close focus. Yeah. And also the the focus speed and we'll get we'll get to all that. But we, we do think these are going to be excellent for video. Yeah. The focus motors are silent, which is a huge benefit, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. And we think they're going to be a, a good choice for shooting video. And they're lightweight, which yeah. means you could get the SL2, yeah. SL2S uh, with one of these lenses on gimbal setup, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a lot easier to balance that than, say, the 24 to 90 that I have on here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try that, yeah. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> He's excited. Well, now we just, we just got these finally on demo, which is why we're now yeah. doing the show, because we didn't have them right away. Uh, they're still hard to get. Shocking, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully... The production not being in Vetsar means they can make more of these. Um, they come in, should mention also, just because I wouldn't be doing my job, is in addition to buying the lenses alone, they also have bundles mm. with SL2 and SL2S that come bundled with either one of these lenses. And until the end of March or April, yeah, one of those, something like that. Yeah, for sure. You can actually save $1,300, um, 1300 US dollars. It's a US program. Um, it's an extension of the Leica Customer Appreciation Voucher Program. So if you're thinking about, you know, the bundles, considering these lenses are about $2,000 and you're saving $1,300. Almost a free lens. Net cost on the lens is like 700 bucks. So yeah. that's pretty Ridiculous. darn cheap for yeah. like a lens. Uh, so yeah, just... to the end of April. I mean, let's end of April. Okay. Yeah. Let's be real. I mean, a Leica body cap could cost you $700. Uh, maybe some of the ones I've got in my secret private That's collection. right. That's yes. right. <laughs> He's got a secret. I have at least two that are worth maybe not quite 700 but yeah. Anyway. I, I, I should mention, yes. in addition to our Red Dead Forum camera talk, Josh gave an... In an insane, like next level <laughs> oh, yes. talk on collecting Leica. Yeah. And there it was pretty fun. Like there was things that Josh took out that I had never seen before. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, nuts, yeah. where did good. that come from? Yeah, I brought that, out that all insane. the big guns because I, I don't have a lot of space in the studio here, but in the store, we set up butt tables and I had like, don't show that yet. I, I, I brought one piece to show. Oh, but, okay. Um, that's like the nine o'clock. Oh, yeah, he's time. gonna show a cool item from there. Later. Anyway, so that was really cool. If you missed it, well, 15 year anniversary. Uh, if you win, <laughs> if you win, and there was something you saw that you liked, and you're watching this, put it in the chat because I'd love to get a, you know some thoughts. On Actually, I'd, lo I'd love to see if anyone in the chat 
came to Josh's talk or, or our, yeah, live, our, talk, or yeah. our live talk. Yeah. Or okay. the party and just drank all of our, our booze and ate our That's food. right. All our booze. All our booze. <laughs> so yeah, the first night was, was a big party. Um, so let's do a little bit of uh, image. We'll do some images stuff and then we'll do a little live shooting. Yeah. But I want to talk about some of the autofocus performance. Uh, we'll play. So let me pull up some do it. stuff. I love stuff. All right. You want to go to the old computer screen, Jose? Mm, beautiful. There's hey, me. There's yeah. me. So if you've watched any of my testing shows before, you know my um, classic elevator room closet uh, <laughs> test chart. If you've been in the store, you've seen the depressingly tiny little dimly lit space that this is in, which I purposely like because it's not some perfectly lit, beautiful big studio that's nothing like the real world. This is very representative of the kind of lighting and situation you would find yourself in. And I feel like it's even though it's still a test chart, it's a more honest, more accessible type of testing that anybody could do with some gaffer's tape and a wall or an elevator closet. Um, so what I've done is I've tested the 35 Sumicron, the new 35 Sumicron SL against the 35 Apo SL, the 35 uh, F1.8 Panasonic, and the 35 uh, Sumicron M lens, a spheric, the 11, 6, 73, 74 as well as the 35 millimeter positions on the 24 to 70 SL zoom and the 24 to 90 SL zoom. So basically anywhere in the SL lineup, you could have 35 millimeters. I've compared it against the new 35, both wide open and also stopped down to 5.6. So F2 and F5.6. And what I look for is a couple of things in this test. Number one is, what is David doing over there? Where is that? <laughs> He's crawling on the floor. <laughs> uh, oh, you got Enzo all excited. Oh, like, oh there's nothing's happening. All right, I got, um, the, I got the CL. There you go. Uh, carry it, carry it, carry it. Now, now Enzo's like freaking out. That's all right, I'll um, pet him, I'll okay. pet him. Give him some pets. Anyway, so what I look for is center sharpness. I look for not just corner sharpness, but I look at how the corners are consistency-wise. So for example, if one corner is really, really sharp or one corner is really, really soft, I look for the way that the focus and the sharpness radiates out from the center, in this case, on a flat field, because that's going to tell me how the lens is performing and especially wide open it's very telling uh, i look for contrast color basic, basic things like that although those can be adjusted in post-production a little bit easier so the first thing that i've got is just one image which doesn't help us that much so if we take a look at the 35 sumicron sl which is on the right versus the 35 apo sumicron sl which is on the left oh thank you oh but they can't see the labels yeah the labels uh, that's fine that's fine that's fine, that's fine. Let the dog calm down. He's fine. He wants to go. Don't worry around. about it. Um, as I've said many times on this show, the Apple Sumicron SL lenses, the five primes, 28 through 90, that Leica offers, represent the sharpest, highest quality Leica lenses ever made across any system, anywhere. I have tested everything, and nothing comes close. I'm talking about the 35 Apple M, 50 Apple M, 75 Noctilux M, R lenses, S lenses, whatever. They are next level performance, which is especially mind-boggling when you think of the price point they come in relative to the 35 and 50 Apple mm -hmm. M and the fact that they're autofocus, weather sealed, yada, 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 all the things you get with an SL Prime. So I think that's important to state because the 35 Apple SL demolishes every other 35 that Leica makes. So in the end, comparing these two lenses is not necessarily about, ooh, I wonder if the new 35 is as good as the Apo, and more about what does the new 35 offer look-wise and performance-wise relative to the benchmark? Because we know it's not going to exceed it. No. It would not be logical to think that. So here we go. We can look in the center, and we can see they're not that far off in the center. That's not a huge surprise. As soon as you start getting out towards the corners is where the performance difference is very apparent. Mm. So on the right, we can see the 35 Apo S, excuse me, the 35 non-APO SL on the left is the APO. The 35 APO SL, in fact, all the APO SL lenses are sharper, wide open in the corners than all other Leica lenses are in the center, wide open. <laughs> I'm going to say that wow. one more time. Repeat that. APO SL prime lenses, wide open at F2, are sharper in the corners than every other Leica lenses in the center, wide open. That's the level of performance we're talking about here. Well, look up, look at the uh, writing on the test chart. At the very top there. Here? Yeah. The upside down writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. I that mean, it's ridiculous. It's insane. So, Leica is not stupid. 
So when they do these lenses, they don't necessarily say, oh, well, let's try to make this as good as the Apo SL. They don't have to because they already have the Apo SL. They, they already do. have the benchmark. They don't need to do anything else when it comes to our performance. So instead, they try to make a lens that looks and renders and performs differently to give people different options. And of course, in this case, at a much lower price point. So it's more accessible mm -hmm. to more people. Less than half the price. So this is, and again... Al and also, I think yes. it goes with without saying, mm -hmm. or it should go with saying, which is to say, one of the biggest obstacles to the SL in terms of its adoption, I'd say, and maybe this is less of an issue now, Yeah. but when this was the only available lens, mm. the 24 to 90, mm -hmm. oh, it's the, the SL and the lenses, it's too heavy. Mm -hmm. So like, I said, okay, what about the, you know, here, we've got some smaller uh, Apple Summicron lenses. Mm -hmm. People said, eh. They're still too heavy. <laughs> so guess what? Yeah. Now you have the lightweight uh, non-Apo SL, SL Summicrons, mm -hmm. which are much, much, much lighter. So when you pick up the camera with one of these on there, mm -hmm. uh, you feel the difference. So anyway, back back yeah, to Josh. Back to the exciting stuff. <laughs> so here we've got, I promise you, this is not going to be two hours of test starts. Well, it would be if I had my way, but David would, would not have that. Um, <laughs> On the left, we have the Panasonic Lumix 35 f1.8, wide open at 1.8. On the right, we have the SL35 Simicron, the non-Apple, the, the new one, wide open at f2. Let's take a look and see. Give it a second to render. Here we go. Okay, so on the left, we have the Panasonic. On the right, we have the Leica. Very, very similar. Mm -hmm. That doesn't surprise me at all. I see maybe a slight edge for the Leica lens down here. It could be just a slight difference in focus position. I'm not necessarily going to say that's like a game-changing difference. Very similar. Um, slightly higher contrast. You can see that here, like in the lettering on the door. Uh, these are edited exactly the same way. They're the same everything. So there's no like cheating here. Um, or is there? No, there's not. Um, let's take a look at the corners here. Corner performance is pretty close. I think actually the Panasonic has a slight edge in this corner, but I'm willing to bet that's, if you look oh. in the other corner, it's the opposite. Let's yeah, <laughs> but look at the difference here. This whoa, is what I find fascinating whoa, whoa, whoa. is the evenness or the linearity of, of sharpness from center to corner, not really linearity, the way it falls is much more consistent corner to corner on the 35 SL uh, Leica lens than it is on the Panasonic. Because here at the top right of both, where we see the Panasonic has a little bit of an edge to the Leica lens. And you may be going, well, that's why is the Panasonic version sharper? And then you go to the bottom left corner these are on a tripod. This, nothing has moved. Well, and and the camera was on a plate. Yeah, so this yeah. is like rock solid. I mean, I did this, I do this a lot. So, and here we have an interesting situation where the Panasonic is losing a lot of sharpness in the left corner, the bottom left corner, but the Leica lens bottom left corner looks pretty much the same as the top right. To me, that is one of the hallmarks of modern Leica lenses, which is they are very even from corner to corner. So whatever you're photographing, whether it's something that's a flat field or something that's not, you have the confidence to know that all four corners are going to look the same and you're not going to have this sort of like weird effect because depending on what's in your corner, if it's supposed to be soft or sharp and it's the opposite or not what you expected, it's going to look really unusual. So I find this very interesting. Um, and you'll find that more as I show you more images. Um, let me show you now. That's the... something else I saw. Tell me. Well, I noticed you showed at at 1.8 mm -hmm. versus F2. Mm -hmm. Do you have F2 versus F2? I do, I do. So I did stop the Panasonic down to F2 just to see how that would compare. So now we are at F2 and F2. We have parity here for aperture. Center is the same. Now, interestingly enough, now the Panasonic center is a little bit sharper or is not... Softer. It's No, let me rephrase. Oh. At 1.8, the Panasonic center was a tad softer. Yeah. Now it's Now it's the same. So okay. that's very interesting. The Leica okay. wide open is where the Panasonic is stopped down by a third. Sure. Let's take a look at our corners here. Top right looks this pretty much it's the really same. It's really close, really close. And then bottom left, we're still seeing the Panasonic's oh, wow. getting a little yeah. bit mushy here. So again, even stopped down to the same aperture, F2 to F2, the Panasonic is not having that linear corner to corner performance. Hmm. Um, interesting. Which is, again, not that's a huge surprise. Um, let me go to... Make sure I'm at the right one. Okay. I'm going to go through the 35 size. Summicron M versus the Panasonic. Now, I should well, mention... Let, let's show that one. The 35 Summicron... Um, uh, there. You can, can... Can that be in the small thing? Uh, no, Josh can... 
There you go. There you go. Talk about it. So this is the silver version of the 35 Sumer Chron M, uh, 11674. This lens was introduced maybe six, seven years ago. And in this case, it has the adapter on it. Move closer, David. It's out of focus. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. Anyway. It's a small lens. What do you uh, want? I should mention this lens is really a street shooting lens, which means that it is not a corner performance lens. That's what the FLE and the APO are for. And you'll see that when I show the comparison shot. So don't okay. have a heart attack. Um, so on the left, so there we go. We've got the 35 Simicron M lens, wide open at f2. On the right is the Panasonic. Panas excuse me, Panasonic. Panasonic. Is the Leica. <laughs> Leica. Yeah, I thought I just had the Panasonic up. No, here's the Leica 35 Simicron. You can see in the center, it's already sharper, and just wait until you see the corners. You know, Whoa. The, the, yeah, the 35 Whoa. Simicron. This is by design. Um, so that's why I try not to be like hard on it because I know what it's supposed to do, just like its predecessor. Um, this lens is designed to have very fast focus fall off corner to corner. Uh, that's why the APO exists. That's why the FLE2 exists. But if that's not your objective, then you would get, you wouldn't use this lens. This is a lens really designed for M street shooting, not designed for SL test start shooting. So that doesn't bother me so much. Now, if it was the only option in the M lineup for 35, I may have some concerns because I would personally want sharper corners for what I do, which is like automotive stuff. Sure. Um, but you know you have the option. Like there's like how many 35s now? Like five. all of them. Um, but anyway, so that's that. And then the last thing I'll show, which I really, or I really guess there's two more. Uh, the Apple? No, the 30. I showed the Apple. Oh, the 2470. 24 to 70. Here we go. Okay. On the left is the 24 to 70 2 8. This is the the newer uh, L mount so zoom. Do you have 2 8 on the? I don't. I, oh, okay. I just did wide open versus okay. wide open because okay. I don't want to cheat the either lens. Um, and here on the right is the SL35 Summicron. You can see nearly identical performance in the center. Yeah, very, very, very close. And on the corners, the interestingly, this the zoom has a little bit higher contrast. The prime has a little bit higher sharpness. They're very close. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom, hmm. we are seeing sharper corners in, on on the um, on, on the, the prime, prime, which yeah. makes sense. The 24 to uh, 70 is a very M lens rendering like zoom, mm -hmm. which yeah. I've talked about before. We have a whole show on that lens. Um, it actually kind of splits the difference in this case between the 35 Cron M and the 35 Cron SL, uh, which is great for a zoom. Because remember, we're talking zoom versus prime. Sure. Um, but what I really want to show, what I'll finish off with this, is a lens that David and I uh. um, talk about lovingly frequently, which is the 24 to 90. Which is on this camera. What right do here. we always say about the 24 to 90, David? Okay. While what do we say while, while I hydrate? Oh, we should. Oh, are you you want? I'm hydrating. You want to see hide over there? Twenty four ninety, right here. Here, actually, we can do a close up of that if I take this off of, put my foot up go. on the other thing. Here we go. Here we go. Actually, here. Uh, just go to the two shot. Well, okay, we're there fine. We go. We're good. Okay, so twenty four ninety, right here. Twenty four to ninety, as we always say, offers prime lens performance in a zoom. Flexibility of the zoom with the optical performance of prime lenses mm -hmm. at every mark focal length, 24, 28, 35, 50, 75, 90, as good or better than M prime lenses. Yes. Okay. The, the main ones. The main like ones. The crazy Apple ones. Right. So we go back to the computer screen. What do we got? Here we've got, thank you, the 24 to 90 on the left at 35, wide open, in this case at 3.2, which is where it falls. And the new 35 Simicron SL on the right, wide open at F2. And if we go to the center, we can see they're basically the same. That is crazy, which is a testament to the 24 to 90 as much as it is the 35 Cron. Ooh. And we can see the corner yeah. performance is almost <laughs> exactly the same. Uh, slightly higher contrast and slightly higher sharpness, actually. Yeah, I'm going to give it to the zoom on Yeah, this you know what, David? No, you're right. I'm going to give it you're to right, the Especially zoom. in the extreme corners. So he, this is exactly what we'd expect. It is. Which is... The 24 to 90 mm -hmm. is performing as good as or better than a prime lens. Yes. Not as good as the 35 Apo SL or the 35 Apo M, but pretty darn close. Now, in fairness, we're, we're comparing 3.2 versus F2. Yeah. But still wide open versus wide open. Yeah. So if you have a 24 to 90, the reason to get the 35 and 50 Sumicron non Apos is because they're smaller and lighter and correct. F2. But if you're doing landscape or if you're stopping down all the time, and you have a 24 to 90, you're not going to gain anything from the new Sumicrons. Because if you don't care about the weight and you don't care about the maximum aperture, you're going to get a higher level of performance from the 24 to 90 sure. and a higher level of flexibility, of course, because it's a zoom. How do things look when you stop down? Hmm, let's do that. 
There we go. With the the, the same comparison, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, can you flip those? Ye- which one is that? That's uh, the other one. No, there it is. There it is, yeah. Nope. Yep. Or, boom. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it just moves around. So on the left, we have the 24 to 90 again, and the right, we have the 35 SL. This time, we stuffed loading, both loading, lenses loading. down to 5.6. Still loading. It's thinking about Love it. Love those SL. There we go. There we go. Now wow. we're pretty much at parity. They're both let's ridiculously look at the, Let's look at the sharp. corners. Yeah. The 35 is coming into its own here. Yeah, Still a little bit higher, a little bit sharper now. Not it's, much, it's though. It's close. It's close. Again, prime lens performance, right? And yeah, very close. I think 35 is starting to have a little bit of an edge. Wow. But okay. I think what's what's impress- impressive is how good that wide open performance is. It is amazing, um, yeah. So again, 24 to 90, if you already have one, or if you're thinking about should, should you get the Zoom or the Primes, the non-Apple Primes, I mean, if the real benefits of the Primes don't benefit your photography, don't get the Primes. Get the Zoom. Because the zoom gives you 24 to 90 versus just having these two focal lengths. Um, but that, again, a testament to a lens that came out in 2015. Yeah. It's still just crushing it, which I love. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, let's do... We should do a little... Now we should get away from the computer screen for a bit. We should talk about close focus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really another big game changer. Um, why don't you start with the um, Apo 35. Okay. So we can see where that falls, because we all know that focus is pretty close. It does. And then we'll go to the non Apo 35 and see what that can do. So 35 Apo focuses to what? 0. 0.27? 0. 0.27. I have all yeah. that data up. Okay. That was a good guess. Yeah. It's an educated I think, I guess. Think you're correct. Yeah. Mm, it is, let's make sure you got it right. Yes, 0. 0.27. Yes. 0. 0.27. Sometimes okay. I'm right. Sometimes, yes. What, what does it say about a, uh, like a broken clock? Is broken. <laughs> Still broken. <laughs> All right, so, all right, so I, first of all, I'm just gonna pop open our little setup here, and there we go. Okay, now this is going to be a little challenging. Okay, <laughs> all right, Jose, you want to give me a little camera view? All right. Yeah, there we go. This is our friend that's the bear. That's this Oscar the bear. Why is his hat backwards? Ah, he's styling. He's- I don't like that. It's like it's pinned on, dude. No, it's not. Oh, it's not. Oh, oh, it is. Oh, now you're making it more difficult. Somebody, somebody pinned it backwards. All right. Um, okay, he's, so he's that hip, he's hip, he's hip. But that right? is not minimum focus. Yeah, it's close, but it's not minimum focus. So let's keep going in, and we're gonna dial that. <laughs> oh my god, that is a big eye. It's bare reception right there. That's right. Okay, there we go. All right. Am I? Wow. Oh my doesn't... gosh! I thought you were gonna bring the bear onto the table. Yeah, I, you know what? That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Okay, bear. Come don't, here. Don't let Enzo see that. There we go. <laughs> He's gonna want to play with it. And I think we should do it sideways so you can see just how close I have to be. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> You're tuning in just now. <laughs> like, what the heck is going on? Uh, that's actually this is the new co-host of the show. This is the new co-host. You're All what right. are you doing? I'm just trying to get to the minimum focus. You can see how prepared and professional we are today. This is the most professional. Oh. Uh. <laughs> wow. All right. So something... You got to have fun. You got to have fun. Something like... I mean, you could just see. It's it's really close, okay? I have to back this up. There we go. There, there we go. go. Oh, he's giving you the side eye. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Side eye. You looking at go. me? I love it. And we're going to focus. There we go. Oof. Can you go to the wide shot so you can see how close that is? Yeah, go to the wide shot. I was <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like I gotta get my hands off the table because everything vibrates. Here, here, here. If I, if I'm I gonna, I'm gonna scoot it around so you can see. Here, let me get this out of the way. That is, that's in focus still. Now that's the 35 Apo, and you could, that's really just, it's not even a hand, a hand width away from from the bear's nose here, and uh, yeah, that's close. It's that's one of the best parts of the 35 Apo is yeah. how close it focuses. Right. Okay. So that's that's minimum <laughs> distance, and it actually is easier just to move the go. camera. There we go. There we go. So let's Crazy, show them right? the non apo Okay. You thought that was close. But oh, wait, there's more. It gets closer. It does. All right. Just tune in and wonder what the heck is going on. So know, I'm right? also wondering what's going on. So I, don't worry. I often wonder what's going on. <laughs> you're I'm in a, a perpetual state of I'm going to take the lens on. shade off. Yeah, you're going to have to at this yeah, point. I'm going to have to. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, let's do it. Maybe focus first before they uh, goes to the close up. Let's put it at minimum. There we go. Well, that's that's focused. Okay. But now I'm going to go to minimum focus by turning all the way, and I'm going to just move in until... That is a big, scary alley. You can see all our studio life. There we go. (laughs) Something like... Three-tenths of a meter. There we go. Okay. Three-hundredths of a meter? So so back up the shot here so you can see. (laughs) Uh, 
Yeah, like four four fingers width in between the lens and and the nose of the bear here. So this is the party trick of the thirty five not Apo. I mean, the Apo is pretty pretty darn good, but it's, it's really close. It's, and it's ridiculous how close it focuses yeah. with no kind of macro no. adapter no. or extension tubes or anything. No, uh, I will mention that the fifty doesn't do the same thing. The fifty, the new fifty goes to. 0.45? 0.45 versus yeah. the 0.35 of the 50 Apo SL. So only so the new the 35 around, right? focuses closer than its Apo brethren. The which, new 50 does not. Which is why I think the 35 is a better choice for video. Mm, okay. I think it's a more universal, and sometimes you just want to push in to get a detail shot. Yeah. Normally, it's not going to be crazy distorted like mm -hmm, that. In mm -hmm. fact, let me use... Uh, I'm going to use something else here. Okay. I'm going to put, put Oscar back. Let's uh, let's use a lens. All right, so I'm gonna just line this up, just so we can see where minimum distance. There we go. All right, Jose. Okay. You know, so we can push in, and if I have this, my hand looks a little weird, but there we go. So that's pretty. You know, it's pretty sharp in terms of of wide. Here, that's wide open performance. In terms of wide open, and you can see you get a really nice, like just blown out background on that. So uh, not not too bad. I'm gonna take a shot. So we can review. Uh, minimum focus on the 35 non apo is 0.24 meters. But look at that! Like right. it's for for again for its intended use. Yeah, that is that is nice and sharp, center performance, and then it just falls off around the edges. You're wide open there, right? I am yeah. wide open there. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. So that that is not bad at all. Yeah. So that I'll show a quick um, visual representation that's a little bit less chaotic. Um, I'm chaotic. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, Let's pop this up. Hold on. Wait. Third. Okay. So here we go. This is 50 Sumicron M at minimum distance, 0.7 meters. I'm like, oh, that's pretty close. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then we've got. Wait, again, what? What? Put that back up again, just yeah. to be clear. Uh, and why don't you tab tab away from that? There we go. Fill the screen up. Okay. That is the 50 Sumicron M lens. Yeah. M lens. Yes. Yes. 0.7 meters. Then we've got the 50 Apo SL mm. at 0.35. Wow. And then the 50 non-Apo SL at 0.45. There you go. So the difference is pretty apparent. This is as close as you're going to get with your M lens. This is the ultimate for 50 close-up, which is the Apo. Yep. And then this is the non-Apo. Where it really gets fun is 35. So we've got... <laughs> 35 Sumacron M, yep. again, 0.7 meters. A non, non APO. Non APO, because that's another category that's altogether. Cheating. That's cheating. Then we've got the 35 APO SL yep. at 0.27. Yep. And the 35 non APO at 0.24. So you can see there's a, a nice wow. boost you get. Not bad. I mean, I wouldn't even call this close up. This is just closer. Yeah. <laughs> this is close up. Yeah. This is ridiculously close. So that's a, a visual representation of that's cool. That's cool. the um, close focus of the new lenses versus the other options. Very cool. Um, Very cool. Okay. You want to talk about autofocus for a bit or you want to show more images or. Well, let me do an actual shoot here just so mm, we okay. can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not, like, yeah. yeah. That's let, me, not, let me look in the chat while you're that's doing that. It's not as chaotic. See so if you have any crazy important critical questions. Well, let's. Answer. Let's just assume that you're not going to be shooting, you know, teddy bears. This, this no, just people. <laughs> Imagine, you know, we talk about this being a portrait lens. I don't think you're going to be, you know, a hand width away from someone's face. Uh, I don't think they'd be very comfortable with that. So, let's talk about just normal shooting environment. So, Jose, get us over to the uh, the live shooting setup here. There we go. And I think part of what we're talking about is also focus speed. I know this is blurry. I I can see it, right? <laughs> Are but you why, sure? Yeah, but ready. Here, we're going to see in real time what that focus is like. And it just pops right in. That was, uh, I just did back button focus on the camera, and, and it really focused back. I'm going to, again, we're going to zoom out, or not zoom out, we're going to focus all the way to infinity. That's infinity. And again, I'm just going to line this up, uh, crosshair right on the bear's eye, and it just focuses right in. It's, it's, it's pretty quick. It's also extremely dark. You're really not doing this lens any favors, but... Um... No, I'm shooting at a 20th of a second wide open, so it's definitely uh, not very well lit. Yeah, it's we're, outside we're of We're well lit, but uh, there's nothing else in the studio is. Right. So, so it's doing a great job here, and you can see, you know, we want to talk about the, the bokeh as well. We'll get there. Yep. I'm just going to take a shot. Let's, let's play this back and see what we get. That that's wide open performance. Now what, what lens is this again? Remind me. We didn't do the overlay, so 
This is the, uh, right, this is the 35, the new one. The new 35, yeah. so we're going non-APO. Non-APO, yeah. Nice. So let's take a look here. I mean, if, I mean, by any measure, this is very, very sharp. Lots of detail in that fur. And you can see that the bokeh is, is really pleasing. Uh, it, it's not nervous. It's smooth. When we go up here to our lights, you know, we got good shapes. And Josh is going to talk more about this mm -hmm. as, as he tested it, mm -hmm. uh, direct comparison. But, uh, you know, it's really nice. I'm going to grab something else here. We can go back to us, Jose. Yep. One second. Grab this. Okay. So I'm going to bring this into the light. I know this is ridiculous. <laughs> pull the flowers out of nowhere. This happens. I'm going to... I don't know what's happening right now. Pop this tripod a little higher. Mm -hmm. Hey, look at that. Jose, why are you waving? Why is Jose waving? I can see myself on the micro. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't show the studio. No, no, the studio's no, a mess. No, no, we don't. Oh, boy. Everyone's wait, like, yeah, show what us the what studio. What is in the air today? I don't actually know. I don't know. Okay, here we go. The flowers. Yeah. So Yeah, it's the pollen. That's the pollen's fault. The, po the pollen. David, it's all, it's all David, allergy will you season. please focus? I am focusing. You're not. You're not. There we go. I don't there know what's we happening. Go. There we go. All right, Jose, you want to pop that up for me? Look at that. Ooh, that's actually pretty nice. That's like, that's a rip. Are you waving still? I can't see you, I don't think. <laughs> Jose's waving still. He's like, am I back <laughs> He just here? wants to be on TV. You are on TV. Wait, what is this? Over there, over there. Okay. I like that purple thing back there. Wait, is, like that, is that time. Jose? All right, no, no looking at Jose back there. Okay. <laughs> but take a look at just how nice that is. I mean, that's like, whoop, that's not nice. There we go. I would use manual focus. I would use autofocus. Yeah, so there. Uh, uh. Anyway, this is getting a little go. bit silly. So I want to talk for a minute about okay we can stop that <laughs> come back to us Jose. there we go I want to get a shot. Uh, no no it's okay there we, we go can, we'll show more flowers later there we go there's the shot i want to talk a little bit about focus um, autofocus performance because one of the tests that i wanted to do with uh the new sumacrons was see how they compared in terms of focus speed to both the apo sumacrons and to the panasonic um, f1.8s whatever they are called um so i have a device that allows me to measure Focus speed, basically, it's a timer that starts when you press the shutter, and you photograph the timer, and it's, it tells you how long it took. So That's pretty cool. Uh, I did about 40 images uh, for each lens, meaning I, I ran the test 40 times so that I had a really good sample variation or sample size so that I could come up with an average. And what I did was created a score for all four of the lenses, or six of the lenses that I tested, and the, the lower the score is, the faster the lens focuses. This test is only quasi-scientific because of course it depends on exactly my way that I press the shutter and exactly how the button goes. But I'm gonna pull up the data um, because I've been bashing Panasonic all day, but actually I get to give Panasonic some props, give them some in, props. in a moment. So Jose, can you, go, can you wow. go to the computer screen here? Wow, that is... Okay, uh, what matters, blow, what yeah, matters yeah, yeah. is Scoot this over. top row. Here we go. This top row right here. Wow. Okay. So essentially, the way that this works is the lower the number, the faster the lens autofocuses. So the king is the Panasonic 51.8. Wow. With a score of 52.25. Again, the number itself is meaningless in this case. Um, we can use them relativistically to each other. The 50SL non-APO is very, very close uh, at 57, so within 10%. So essentially not really noticeable. The 35SL and 35 Panasonic are nearly identical. 69.85 versus 68.65, so slight advantage for the SL, again, not noticeable. What was really interesting, and I'll be honest, not terribly surprising, was how much slower the Apo SL lenses were, which you would never would notice unless you compared them against the new non-Apo lenses. And this makes sense because the Apo lenses are bigger, heavier, and have more glass that has to move in order to turn the focus ring, or turn the move the lenses to activate mm. an in-focus image. So we're seeing scores in the 80s for the 35 APO and the 50 APO SLs, which is like a 50% slower focus speed. Now, 50% slower than really fast is still fast, but if your objective is to have the fastest autofocus performance with the Leica lens, the two new Sumacrons represent the fastest autofocusing prime lenses that Leica makes. Significantly faster than yeah. the APO primes. Yeah, yeah. And David, can you talk about where that um, would be applicable in real world shooting? <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we can jump back. Yeah, we don't need to yeah. see this anymore. People uh, don't care about boring numbers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, fast is fast. Mm -hmm. So again, we were discussing, okay, where could this lens really come in handy? And, um, you know, Josh's first idea, what did you propose? 
Um, well, I was saying street photography. You were. For street photography, if you're out there doing snapshots with yep. ESL. Yep. And you I said, one, I said, yeah, but, you know, with street photography, a lot of it's pre-focused. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pre-focusing, waiting, setting up, you know, and, and that. Where do we really, where do we really need speed, mm -hmm. autofocus tracking speed, mm -hmm. and quickness when it comes to portraiture? Tell them. Family portraiture. Like, <laughs> yeah. I know this is kind of basic. This isn't necessarily professional photography here, but it could be event photography. You could morph it into that. But let me tell you something. Uh, if you've ever tried to photograph children <laughs> or pets, mm -hmm. they Try move them with focus. Yeah, they move so fast and erratic, you, erratically. I mean, it's like they're trying to actually avoid being caught, you know, like actively. They have active avoidance patterns. <laughs> um, so having a lens that can focus twice as quickly is a huge benefit to actually- Not quite twice as quickly, but 50% well, faster. 50% faster. Yeah. You know, actually getting a shot that's in focus that you like. Uh, so I think I think that the the flexibility of, of a 35 or 50 that can that can achieve that, that fast focus that's lightweight, that's unobtrusive, especially when you take the lens shade off, mm -hmm. This really fits into a whether it's it's your own family in terms of taking pictures, um, you know, or an event photographer or wedding photographer who needs to be discreet but also quick, especially in lower light conditions. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. as we pointed out, you can't see how dark it is it's right in dark. front of the table, but yeah. it's pretty dark. And um, being able, and, and it's struggling a little bit with that, but not as much as you would expect. That's probably, I would say, like a darkened ballroom kind of lighting yeah. uh, without the purple spotlights. But it could be really useful, mm -hmm. especially for, for someone who wants to shoot people in, in those environments. Yeah. And I think yeah. we're all at least at some point in that, in that situation where, where we want to shoot pictures of our families, whether at home or on vacation mm -hmm. or at special events. And, and that's part of the importance of photography. I think like I had that in mind when they made these lenses, when you think about how they perform where you've got a faster focus fall off, mm -hmm. sharpness fall off than the Apos. They're lighter, mm -hmm. they focus faster, but they're still weather sealed, still, still dust sealed, still all the benef benefits of an SL lens. This really does feel like a good family portrait yeah. or, or travel portrait or street shooting setup for an SL2 or an SL2S. I think so. For stills or video, I think. I do. Uh, since it's not about nine o'clock here, it I want to break from SL stuff and show something cool. Oh, because showing cool things is very important. I guess the close up is on you, so um, yeah. I still want. Well, I, I don't trust you to take that out of the bag. <laughs> so in this plastic nondescript bag, I have uh, one of the pieces that I was able to show. Last Actually, the close up week. camera is on you. Oh, right, perfect. right here. Okay. And a, a lens that normally comes with a camera. That is very difficult to get by itself, and you can see I've very gingerly um, bubble wrapped it. Wait, here. wait, is there any guesses first? It's too late. No, we should do guesses. It's too late. We don't have time for that. Oh. Um, so what I have here, let me get it out of this bag gingerly. Ooh. I can't tell if I'm in focus as I so you tell me. Sure. You're good. Is the 35 Sumalux FLE M Edition 60. This was introduced in 2014 for the 60th anniversary of M cameras and came originally with an M body also in stainless steel that didn't have a screen on it. These lenses very rarely become available separately. And this is actually the first time I've ever had the chance to offer one by itself. Normally they come with a set. What's cool about these lenses is they are manufactured from solid stainless steel, which is something like I will probably never do again. It has this really interesting design where it's totally um, like totally flat sides like that. You can see here, it's got this sort of, there we go, stainless steel focus tab. This is number 542 out of 600. They made 600. It comes with uh, stainless steel back caps and front caps, as well as, Jose, you can come back to me if you want, um, the best part, which is right here. Ooh, what's that? This is the lens hood. Ooh. So you take, actually, the front lens ring is also stainless steel. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. And... And you guys thought that this was an SL lens. Yeah, up, right? So. And then now, we can go back to the close-up. We have the vented stainless steel lens shade. Uh, the aperture ring, I think someone just asked about aperture ring. Well, it feels fine. It feels like an FLE. It doesn't really feel any different. 
um, the focus ring is tight enough and smooth enough where you're not really going to interfere with either one, um, at least I don't think. Now, I don't know how many people would take this lens and use it. I can think of at least one person. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, this is probably one of the most unique and extreme examples of a special edition 35 Sumalux because of how different the design is, how different the material is. And I remember when we did the opening, the Lenny Kravitz opening yeah. in the design district, um, a friend of mine had one of these uh, on his camera and we were speaking with Dr. Kaufman, the yes. chairman of Leica, and he remarked at how difficult it was to work with the stainless steel uh, when they made these sets. And he, he said, we're probably never going to do another stainless steel camera. We haven't seen one in the last eight years. So I think this is one of my favorite special edition modern lenses. And certainly this is a great example of one that's in mint condition with the hood and all the caps. Now it didn't come with the box because that would be, it would be, it would be in, the, in the box with the camera set. So it was like this big over box. So um, anyway, a cool, unique piece, something I'd never had before here that I wanted to show off um, for you guys tonight while we were geeking out about lenses. Is that heavier than brass? Oh yeah. This lens is dense. This I don't know exactly how much it weighs. I should have weighed it, but uh, it weighs a lot. I mean, I don't think it weighs more than an Oct a Noctilux does. It's just dense because it's small and made out of stainless steel. So it feels heavier than it looks for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Wow. Okay. Yes, that was my my cool oh, item for the your, night. Your tangent. Jose, you can put the link in the chat if you want. Um, I'm sure it's in New Arrivals somewhere on our website. Very cool, very cool. Um, David, do you want to switch lenses so we can show the 50? Please. I, I just put the 50, the new 50 on there. I want to show... Well, you didn't show... What didn't, show... I, what didn't I show? To show the performance? Uh, no, I'll get there. But I'm, well, I'll put this away. I want you to just, wait, we set, start setting up for the 50. So what I'm going to show next is going to be the 50. Uh, well... Uh, maybe I'll show Boca on the 34. I, I haven't decided yet. Uh, I have to. I have to begin the apparently overly complex process. Apparently, of yes. Putting this back in its little house. Um, there we go. We got it. It's okay. Don't worry. What's that question? If you were to own either the 35 and and, and 50 Apple SLs or the new 35 and 50 SL Crons without consideration of price, which would you choose? Well, that would depend. What um, is your intended use? Yeah, I mean, if I was doing a lot of street photography or photographing things that require the fastest autofocus speed, or if I was going to be traveling super light, maybe a lot of international travel, mm. I'd go with the new uh, Simicrons. Yeah. If I cared about outright performance beyond anything else and didn't mind that the Apos were a little uh, heavier and priced higher, Apos. I'd go with the Apos. Yeah. I don't think you, you know, I could argue for either one. I think it just comes down to... Yeah, I just want to show this while Josh is packing it up. Oh, so yeah. This is just a... Uh... Let me zoom that out. Uh, the shot that I took just before we did our little switcheroo. Uh, so this was with the 35 before we switched to the 50. This is the 35 Sumacron SL. And, you know, I, I think it's worth noting here just how smooth this is. Look at the... Uh, and Josh can look at this. The point of focus. Ooh. Yeah, like it just really is very, very pleasing in terms of... Yes, they work on the SL601. Yeah, look at that. Sorry. It's just really, really nice in terms of the fall off. Can you put that back? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. I don't want to knock it off the table and break it. No problem. Thank you, Dan. Anyway, so that that was uh, kind of an interesting thing. You can come back. We're not we're not shooting this yet. All right, here we go. I'm going to pull up the different test here. Here we go. Oh, but You're working on it. Okay. You want me to show some stuff or you want to show something? I'm going to show Boca. Yeah, go. Okay, so we, we're still talking about the 35, so I'm going to keep that going for now. We've got, we're sure. doing good on let's, time. Let's so. do Boca, because I, I was just showing them that, um, how nice that's soft. If you've watched the show before, you know that my version of the Boca test is the classic, everyone knows, camera bag hanging on the thing in the store shot. Which because is that's so common, right? Which is, everybody has this in their house. Everyone has a camera <laughs> store. I mean, the, the thing that I like about this is it allows me to have the maximum amount of space behind the subject with controlled lighting, because it's... We, if you do this outside during the day and the lighting is changing all the time, the bogus is going to look different sure. and it becomes very difficult to maintain consistency. So this test is designed to show um, primarily just the way the focus fall off looks mm -hmm. and how the bokeh looks and how different shapes uh, render as the lens falls out of focus. So I shot all the lenses wide open and uh, this allows me to sort of see how they feel. Yep. So if we look at the... Here we go. I want to look at the 35 Apo versus the SL non-Apple 35. So on the left, we have the 35 Apple SL. On the right, we have the 35 non-Apple SL. 
And the first thing that I noticed when I was looking at these testing was just how round and smooth and consistent mm. the areas of bokeh are on the non-APO, more so than any of the other lenses that I tested. That's really noticeable here. You can see just how round this is, where here it's starting to get a little bit elongated, like footballish. That's also noticeable here. Uh, this is our video wall with our logo on it. And you can see that it um, it's very, very smooth and very, it's both recognizable, but not, meaning the shape of the actual original object um, has not been terribly distorted from its original shape. Um, it's also noticeable here. This is um, like a like a red dot, like a light up sign. Again, very round, very smooth, very, this actually is almost a mix between Sumalox and Sumacron Bokeh. It's like a middle ground in between the two, at least in terms of what I've seen. Whereas the Apple Sumacron is very much a traditional Sumacron Bokeh. So here you can also see that where the way that this shape is here, see how it's like a little bit elongated and here it's very round. Hmm. These are small things, but these are things that you notice when you study Bokeh and you start comparing lenses to each other. And the overall takeaway that I have is that this new Sumacron renders totally different than anything else in the portfolio. If I go to the M lens, which I think is this one, here we go. Yes, sorry, hang on. Here we go. Now we've got 35 Sumacron M aspheric on the left, and again, our 35 SL aspheric on the right. So these are two lenses that I would consider to be most analog in this case, because they're both non apo 35 Sumacron aspherics, both full frame. But you can really see the difference here with how smooth the, the new SL lens is. Look how wow. round and smooth those are versus here where you're getting that sort of double image. Um, if we go here, you can see the fall off of this like um, LED light on our cash register is much harsher. Um, everything is more distinct, more linear, more geometric without being obnoxious, without being like some of the lenses where it's, it barely feels like it's even out of focus. Um, the Sumerus can feel like that sometimes. So I really like that this isn't like the other 35 Sumacrons that Leica makes. I like that it has its own unique performance and own unique bokeh because this would mean that the images I shoot with this are going to look and feel different than the images I've shot with all the other gazillion lenses that I've used. Here, the sign, the Leica dot sign, you can see the dramatic difference. These are both Sumacrons, both at f2. Now, this says f2.8, but remember that the camera doesn't actually know to guess the, the actual aperture, aperture setting of an M lens that's adapted to it. So it's just a guess. But I shot this picture <laughs> six hours ago, so I know <laughs> it was at F2. Um, look at the difference in, in the shape here. How this just is perfectly circular, super smooth, very satisfying fall off into kind of buttery nothingness. Where here it's like a little bit squiggly and you start to get a little bit of like flare going on. So really, really, really impressive bokeh performance from the 35 Simicron. And the last thing that I will compare it to is... The, nope, sorry, that one, almost there. Yes, okay. So the Panasonic on the left at F1.8 and the new Leica 35 Sumacron on the right. This is you're probably the most similar, although not exactly the same. You can definitely see there's a little bit less depth of field on the Panasonic, which makes sense because it's a third, point eight, a third yeah. of a stop faster. But I still find the way that shapes render on the Leica lens to be more pleasing. Here, the differences are definitely less. No question. I expect that. These lenses have some similarities that you cannot deny, as I talked about for the last hour. But again, this is where I feel like the coding differences come into play, if there are any. We're speculating. Not sure, yeah. Because I can see the way that these, the camera and, excuse me, the lens is handling these bright light sources and the way that it just turns them into nice spheres. Uh, if I go to the sign here, pretty similar here. Again, not a huge surprise. If they were dramatically different, I would be more surprised than if they're they were the same. Um, this I don't. This is not a sharpness test, so these look very similar. So for me, the controlled bokeh, the ability to recognize but not be distracted by the focused fall off areas in the new 35 Simicron are the best part of that lens in, the, in a rendering sense. Obviously, we already know that it's got a nice um, center performance and a nice fall off corner to corner, which we expect. Um, as a Leica lens. So I think that Leica did a really nice job with making something that didn't look like everything else in the portfolio while still performing at a level that you'd expect for a full frame L mount mm. lens. Mm. What else should we show? Um, we need the close focus. We can talk about 50. Here we go. 
Well, let, let's let's hop back to us and see yeah. if there's any questions so far. Yeah. Jose, what do okay, we got? got? While I hydrate, and we're talking. About. Um, no, no, no questions. Five, Somebody just asked about you know differences between the Leica and the Sigma and Panasonic, but we spoke about that already. So. Okay. I mean, yeah, we didn't bring any Sigma lenses in because we wanted to bring in the lenses that seem most likely to be the ones the Leicas were either based on or inspired by, or, and yeah. are certainly. Where all the chatter was, you know, we we knew if we didn't bring in those lenses, people would say, "Well, you have to compare them against the Panasonic lenses." So, so we did. We did. <laughs> Spent a lot of time, too much time, too all much day time. doing that. Um, so the next um, super duper exciting. No other comments, questions. That starts. So that was, no, I don't oh. think so. Right. We we'll just keep them coming, Jose. If we if we get them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, a few comments here and there about people loving their Apple cells. Okay. Yeah. So do we. Yeah. Love them. They're amazing. Recent, so. <laughs> I'm not. I would never disagree with that. Uh, let's show the, I want to show the, I guess the M line. Let me find it. Give me a sec. It's hiding in here somewhere. Do do. There you are. I want to show the 50 Sumicron M versus the 50 Sumicron SL non-APO, uh, which we have here. So 50 Sumicron M is on the left. 50 non-APO SL is on the right. Mm -hmm. We start in the center. Very, very similar. I'll give a slight edge to, no, I don't even know if I can give one the slight edge. They're very, very close. Corner performance, I expect to be somewhat similar. I'm seeing increased contrast and sharpness here on the top right of the SL50. I mean, that's pretty dramatic. I'm yeah. guessing the bottom left will be more towards, yeah. So oh, here we're, we're, well, this doesn't surprise me. We're seeing an even more linear performance with the M lens. This is a venerable design that's been around forever. Last of um, the Mantlers, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is about what I would expect. So you're going to get... I think a slight edge of performance on the 50 Sumicron M than you would on the 50 Sumicron SL in terms of corner sharpness, but I think that's more of a design choice as well for the um, the new SL lenses where it's like trying to be more M lens like versus, mm -hmm. although not this M lens, I guess, but <laughs> versus the Apos, which are just like insane, which I'll show. Um, let's see, but center sharpness is basically the same. Contrast, very close. I give the contrast edge to the SL lens. You can see that here on the signage here, the equipment signage. Yeah, it's sort of like the mid zone. Yeah, it's popping a little bit more. Um, yeah, so nice high contrast on that lens for sure, which I like. This is, you know, same edit, straight, straight out of camera with a very basic preset applied, barely anything. Um, let's show this one. Here we have the re yet again the swan song for the Apo, yeah. not the swan song, the um, the love song, <laughs> whatever for the Apo. Song. Fifty Apo SL on the left, fifty non Apo SL on the right. Obviously, it's getting beaten up pretty bad in the center. But wait till we get to the corners. Ugh. Whoa, mind blowing performance from the Apo. No surprise, you get what you're paying for. All the way to the like I mean, the edge, edge. Even the detail on the paintwork here on the door frame. Look, look at the top scale there. Look at that. Uh, I mean, there's no comparison. Again, this is why the 50 Apo SL is more than twice the price because it is designed to be the benchmark, the best 50 that Leica has ever made, ever will make. I can't ooh, say that. <laughs> I would like to see them try to beat this. I mean, who really knows what the future holds? We don't, as we always talk about. But if performance is the goal, get the Apo. If vintage rendering or flexibility on M cameras is the goal, uh, get the 50M. If you want something that splits the difference with all the benefits of an L-mount lens, autofocus, weather sealing, dust sealing, hydrophobic coatings, electronic controlled aperture, yada, 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 get the SL Sumicron. It splits the difference really well. And I think all those other benefits definitely help sell it. Wow. Um, the last thing I will show is, bear with me here. No. Yes. Okay. I want to show 50 Panasonic versus 50 SL. I'm guessing they're going to be very close. Making a 50 is a lot easier than making a 35. Yeah, it is. And I've definitely seen more performance differences between the Leica and Panasonic 35s than I have with the 50, which is what I expected. I'm fine with that. Um, center performance, basically the same. Maybe a slight edge to the SL lens, uh, the, the Leica lens, but could just be a slight focus error. Um, top right corner performance, SL, uh, Leica lens, slight edge. I'm guessing bottom right will be slight edge to the Panasonic. Similar to what we're seeing on the 35, just not as dramatic. Again, I think that makes sense. The 35 is, of of the two, I think the 35 is more exciting. And this is true with the Apos as well. Yeah. Um, I think you've spoken about that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But also, I think we have a soft spot for 35s. We do. Um, we do, for sure. But I like the performance of the 50. I think it's very solid. It does exactly what a 50 Supercon is supposed to do. And the bokeh performance is very much like the 35, where you get a little bit of that Sumalux kind of bokeh feel thrown in for free. Because um, Sumacron bokeh and Sumalux bokeh are very different. Um, and this is really the first time that I've seen something that kind of sits in between. Yeah. Uh, which I find very interesting. We're getting real nerdy here, but that's what you watch, I guess. <laughs> um, I think we should stop looking at the screen and start doing some live shooting. Okay. Because this is getting really boring. Yeah. I mean, yeah, not I, for me. I'm, I'm I know, I know, I, I know. You and I I'm can like, talk about this all day. I'm We're like, like zoned in. I'm staring at this I spent, I right spent all day crafting this masterpiece. Ooh. But I would like to show just how the show. performance of the 50... Have you shot with the 50 SL already? You have, right? No. Oh, you you have it. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's show live view um, through that. Yeah, you can pop it up there, Jose. We got uh, Oscar Bear, and look, we got a little bokeh in the corner there. And look, he's hiding behind a flower. What are, you, what are you doing? I don't know. It, it's, this is what happens. Okay. So you can see we're going to get a little bit closer here. I want to just show that, that minimum focus. Here we go. And pops right into focus. We can go a little closer. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. So uh, really good isolation. Obviously, it's, it's much... It, it really is noticeable the difference in magnification between the 35 and the 50, yeah. which is crazy. Uh, but also, as we continue to clo get closer here, let's see, can we get it? No. So that's right at the edge. Yeah, the 50 SL right there. on Apple definitely is a lot further. I mean, it's almost double the minimum focus distance. But uh, I think you'll notice as well, at minimum distance, which, which we are right now, it's not quite as... Uh, creative <laughs> with the 35 when we got really close to the bear things got a little uh crazy a little mm -hmm. chaotic mm -hmm. so so here the 50 is definitely much more controlled mm -hmm. it might be i'd say more your classic portrait yeah this is a look i'm gonna pull the bear again there we go you can pop back to the wide view here jose Ooh, oh, okay okay <laughs> I, I just want to point out that relative to a human the bear is is much much smaller right screenshot yeah Hey! <laughs> Kirsten's gonna oh, love this one. Oh my goodness! Why? Why do we do this to okay. ourselves? So, um, so the bear is much, much smaller. Look at the size of the face versus, you know, a a human scale face. There we go. Um, About the same. 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 Totally the same. Yeah. I mean, I'm just as cute as the bear. And sure. I'm gonna fix this hat. Oh, the hat's really bothering me. They're really bothering me. Right, okay. Fine. Um, there is pins in here though. Wow, it's crazy. I know. Sharp. That's yeah, don't poke yourself. Um, right. So we've got the the bear. I just. I'm just showing for scale that if you were shooting a person, the 50, even though the minimum focus distance is less than that of, or, or greater than that of the 50 APO, mm -hmm. and definitely more than the, the 35 SL, either the 35 SLs, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's still really optimal for portraiture. Because what do we have here? 0.45 meters? Yes. Okay. Compare that to, to a 50. Yeah, which, we sh which I showed. You know, that's right. 0.7 meters, which exactly. is almost... Oh, I guess fifty percent further. So the difference right. is significant. Difference is really, as I mentioned already, closer versus close up. Right. That's how so, I would describe it. Let's pop pull the, the pull the bear. Yes. What's that? Someone just said, said pull the bear. Okay, but I'm going to just so put new, that. I'm putting new, the bear our new there. Models, pull the bear. Pull the bear. There we go. All right, here we go. So I just want to show again. Just mm. use manual focus, man. I should. It's except too I'm not... dark. It's, it's too dark in here, and you're just doing it too badly. Bad of a thank job. you, thank you, thank you. I just want to show the dis if relative. If you distance. watch our SL2 menu episode, you can oh, probably wow. learn. <laughs> wow! Could I? Could I do that? Could I do that? Well, we haven't actually. Neither of us have actually watched it right. since we were. Oh, oh you're just no. breaking stuff. Okay, don't worry about that. All right. Uh, so let's let's use this. Oh uh, boy, we're gonna use the crayons uh, instead. Okay. Things are falling. Here, I just want to show again some detail. Let's go to the bear. If you can uh, pop back to live view here. There, there we go. go. And, and we're going to take a picture just like we did with the 35. We're wide open, taking a shot. And we're going to... No, I'm not going to adjust exposure. I'm going to zoom in. Here we go. And we're going to zoom right in here and take a look at that sharpness. It, I mean, again, it's really, really sharp. Uh, there is nothing to complain about here. This is amazing performance in terms of the point of focus. And then you can see the fall off is really smooth. Yeah. Like that's really, really smooth. Again, it's it's really it's like borderline. There's writing on that tag. Yeah. Right. I'm just gonna show that tag. Yeah. Just in detail. Borderline Sumalux Boca here. I don't know. Right. Not so, not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. Just so just so you can actually see, and I'm gonna take a different shot of this. So take a look here. 
Okay, that is, that's text, okay? That's the little Stife logo. And if we flip back, now I just advanced back to the first shot where it was slightly, and we're only talking maybe, what, two inches forward? Yeah. And you look at the difference. Look how fast that bokeh yeah. and that fall off happens yeah. at F2, not 1.4. Yeah. So I agree with Josh. This is very similar to Sumalux type of, of uh, bokeh. And that could be also because we're focusing that much closer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so if you could, let's say we take a 50 Sumalux 1.4 mm -hmm. at 0.7 meters mm -hmm. versus... We don't have a 50 Sumalux. I know. Oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> we're, we're taking it theoretically. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And... You can go back to what I was saying. Yeah, and, yeah. and we, we take a look at that versus the, the 50 SL mm -hmm. at 0.45. Because we can mm -hmm. get that much closer, mm -hmm. we're still getting less depth of field than a 1.4. Yeah. At F two, um, mm -hmm. so we get the size advantage, the cost advantage. Well, I think, and, and I, I think it really make a really nice portrait lens. Yeah, and I want to mention this again in case you just tuned in. Um, the focus speed on these new SL lenses is the fastest of all the prime lenses, faster than the zooms. It's crazy fast. I'm gonna do another one while you're okay. Fifty percent faster than the Apple Prime. So if you're valuing autofocus speed above outright sharpness especially if you're shooting um, people or travel or other things other than like architecture and landscape, wide open at least, these new SL Supercrons are a fantastic option because of how fast they autofocus. I mean, you should try one if you haven't. If you're local, come to the store uh, here in Miami and, and check them out. Because for me, that's what I was most impressed by from a practical in-use standpoint. I knew they would be sharp. I knew they would have a nice bokeh. I, they're Leica lenses. I knew all of that. But when I saw the focus performance firsthand and then measured it, you know, using, why am I close up here? Ooh, there we what go. happened? Oh, I, there we go. I measured there, it. Okay. I was very, very impressed. Like I take my hands off the table. Okay. Please take your hands off. Well, actually right now the flower is bouncing still from, oh, from Josh's gyrations. Oh, I see. Yeah. That, I think I'm going to manually focus. Yeah, That's please, my idea. Please do. That, that your idea? Okay. That's totally my idea. Here we go. Good idea, David. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Okay. So that's right at minimum focus. We're going to back that off just a little bit. There we go. Am I close? There we go. Let's do that. Okay. This is art. Thank you. Thank you. This is real time art. Mm -hmm. Make it art with David and... on the live stream. But wow, look at that's beautiful. Look at that. So there's our point of focus. Oh, that's not an easy color to render. This is and you can't accuse David of using one of his elaborate Lightroom presets now because no, this, this is, is out of this, this is, is in camera. This is not in camera. Not even, camera. Not even out of camera. There's nothing. Know. It's still in the camera. <laughs> yeah, it's in camera color. Oh, that's, look at that. That's really nice. And look at that fall off. Yeah, that's really nice. And if you can, yeah, look, look at that. The details, point of focus. This is really really nice. I like this guy. Uh, this question from Clips DL. If he wants to compare it to the twenty-four to seventy, I think. Okay. We should. I don't know if it'll get this close, but I want you to try. Don't move yet. Just yeah. Swap oh. the lens. No, no, you're good. Take the lens off. Okay. Don't don't blind everybody. Yeah, yeah. There we, there we go. go. I'm gonna trade you. I'm gonna give you that. Just make sure it's at fifty. Um, sure. Well, you can use the the camera. Will tell you the focal length. Yeah. Part knows why we swap lenses. Do do yeah, just do, go to do, 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 menu, do 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 I am, which is 2.8. Okay. Okay. Show the differences. Do, 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 oh, do. Go back, just show like the whole image. Yeah, I'm just going to... So that's... No, no, show the whole image. Oh, the that's whole image. It. Yeah, yeah. All of it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the whole image. Okay. Whoop, nope. nope. There we go. So that's... The 50? That's the 50. Uh-huh. And that's the zoom. That's like... Twice as much depth of field, almost. Yeah, like look at that. Third, look at the third more. Yeah. difference. Yeah, zoom in to the, just a little bit to that. Um, yeah, yeah, right there. It'll zoom out once, one click so they can. Which one? Right here? Well, I'm just going to go to the in focus right there. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, right there versus the back. And let's let's go back. Nope, not that one. Okay, so that is the zoom. 24 to 70, 2, 8 at 50. 24 to 70, yep. wide open. Oh, 50. Yeah. That's, open. I mean, that's... And it really is like Sumalux yeah. type Yeah, of I'm telling you, that's a big difference. Look at that. Wow. I mean, that's nice. It's sharp. Yeah, yeah. It looks, doesn't look bad. But that's painterly. That's but also, like... if you go to the 24 to 70, go back forward or go forward. Yeah. The bokeh isn't as um, smooth, uh, true to life. What I mean is, you, just like I was talking about earlier, you're starting to get some 
bokeh distortion, for lack of a better term, where the shapes are getting a little bit unrealistic. Yeah, like look up in the on the edge of that. Yeah. Versus, I'm gonna go to this edge. Yeah, see you, how the edge. You can yeah, see how smoother. it looks like almost the shape is changing mm -hmm. because the 50 is just the 50 prime is simply more true to life in the way that the bokeh renders, which is a difficult characteristic to define without showing you this comparison. Here, you should go to this one. Let's look at the leaf. Yeah, you can see it there. I mean, it's just so satisfying the way that the edges just are silky smooth. I mean, we're only talking about a difference of one stop. One stop. That's it. And what a difference it makes, not just in terms of the quantity of the depth of field, but the quality of it between yeah. the two. So can we say, let's let's go back here, go back to us. Uh, I mean, could we say, Josh, that maybe we categorize this as a look lens? Ooh, now you're getting, now it, you're getting feisty. Look, no, I, I think the 50 Sumalux SL would be the king of look lenses mm -hmm. in the SL lineup. I think these are more interesting and have more to tell us than we expected. Yeah. I think more real world use is needed by you. I think you need to take mm -hmm, these on mm -hmm. one of these one of your next trips and spend more time with them. Because these are so new. Really, David and I have very limited experience with them. What we wanted to do a show while they were fresh. We're gonna keep, keep talking about them, of course. That's why I keep um, like playing with all this. Yeah, because it's it's been fun for us to get to know these lenses, and I really do think they are very interesting in the way they perform in terms of sharpness and in terms of thank you, yeah. <laughs> and in terms of the focus fall off and the bokeh and the minimum focus distance. I mean, this is this is a, a new venture for Leica. You know, mm -hmm. this whole L mount thing and figuring out how to make lenses that are more mainstream. Because if you think about the last time they had to do that was the R system. Yeah, and that sure. was a long time ago. And now they're they're in a different world. And I like now that we have three fifty SLs to choose from. We do, yeah. That's pretty cool. When the SL six hundred one came out in two thousand fifteen, if you said well, and technically, yeah, technically we have five. Yeah, that's right. With the two zooms, yeah. But if you had told me seven eight years ago when the SL six hundred one came out that we would have this many choices in this short of a time. Sure. Knowing what we went through with the S system, I would have laughed at you and said, no way. Right. But I've been very pleased with Leica's progress, not and not just making lenses at their little factory in Germany, but being smart enough to collaborate with the other Elma Alliance partners, whether it's publicly stated or not, we can infer some things, mm -hmm. to make lenses that are both well-priced for the system and still distinct and unique, not only from lenses they may be similar to, but also within Leica's portfolio. I think that's very cool. Yeah, it is really cool. And, and they're... Nice. I mean, the, the images are really nice. Then they feel nice. I mean, look, it's like they're like the baby apples. I mean, they look like an apple. Oh, look, the, it's a baby. <laughs> the focus feel feels like an <laughs> apple. Except they focus faster. I mean, dramatically so. We saw the numbers. It's like 50% faster from my testing, which was very comprehensive. What's the what's the weight difference? I'm just curious. What's the weight difference? I don't know gonna... what a 50 apple weighs. I mean, look, hold on. Because that doesn't feel the, too dissimilar to me. Uh, 50 apple M yeah. weighs... 300 grams, so it's about <laughs> 60 grams lighter, lighter wow. than yes, because that's that's 365. So three 60 or so close. grams lighter, yeah. It's very close. Yeah, it's very close. I mean that's really considering the size difference, but that's not a you know, there's I don't right. know how much more glass is actually in the SL lens. It just has to have all the focusing mechanisms sure. and all the weather sealing and all the other magical secrets, duper goodies. Electronics. Um, let me show. Very cool. Very cool. Let's see. Um, so I want to show the sharpness test for the fifty. You did I the. 50. I showed that. No, yeah. I want to show the bokeh test for the for yeah, the yeah. thirty for the fifty. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let's go over that. Bokeh test for fifty. I didn't show that yet. Okay. Computer screen. Hey, thank you, Jose. I know he's like I like he's supposed to know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the universal <laughs> sign language for let's go to the computer screen. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Here we have the 50 Sumicron SL versus, I want to show it against the M. So let me find it. Stand by, please. Okay, there she is. Yeah. Boom. Okay. So on the left, we have the 50 Sumicron M, the venerable 11.826 version 5. It's been around forever. On the right, we've got the new 50 Sumicron SL. Let's take a look at how they do. Here we go. This is fascinating to me. This is really a very clear um, differentiation between true Sumicron bokeh. I mean, it doesn't get any truer than the 50 Cron version 5M lens. This is a Sumicron to its core against the new SL Sumicron bokeh, which is again, more, not, I don't want to say it's Sumilux-like, but it's a blend of Sumilux and Sumicron bokeh where there's this really smooth, um, 
sort of blending of shapes, but everything is still defined. If we look at the circular, here we go, look at that. You're getting the football shapes up here. I guess if you're not American, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the lemon shapes up here. Uh, and because this could be a football also if you play the wrong sport. Um, and the soccer ball <laughs> shapes up here. So a very, very distinct performance from the new SL Supercrons. Even as you start to get out towards the center, you can see how this is really becoming not only lemon shape, but also where it's starting to split. And here it's very well maintained. Um, let's go to the, here we go, to the like a dot. Um, I mean, you can, again, you can see how this is getting elongated and this is maintaining a circular shape. That's really, really, really nice. Great for portraits because you're not going to get a distracting bokeh. Everything is just going to look natural. Uh, I think the 50 Crown SL, David, you really got to do some portraits with it. Yeah. And whatever you take it next, I think that should be, um, um, I think you need like a, like a real world shooting article. Right mm, mm. I'll, uh, I'll remind you. Anyway. Thanks. Um, let's compare this to the Apo. That could be a fun comparison. Here we go. Okay, on the left, we've got the 50 Apo SL, and you'll see also we're getting closer to Supercron Boca here, much like the 50, where it's a little bit more squiggly, a little bit sharper. Um, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. It's like it's, it's you can see harsher edges here versus here where every, everything is much softer, even though these are both 50 F2s. I think the official term for that is ringing. Ringing, okay. Uh, here we've got, again, we're starting to get the... The uh, lemon shape oblong, going oblong. 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 There you go. What's what's the oblong? What's the verb? No adjective. I don't know. Oblong. I, I, didn't, I didn't have coffee before the show. Clearly now I'm falling apart. Um, so again, through all of these fifties that I'm showing, that are what I would say relevant comparisons. You could compare against any fifty you want, but I'm talking about for the relevant, timely comparisons against these new um, SL lenses they really render very distinct, which I'm just fascinated by. And I've looked at all these already, but I'm looking at them now again, and I'm just seeing things I didn't see before and just really intrigued by the, the feel and the softness of the bokeh, the way it falls off without being obnoxious. I mean, look at this here, where this Whoa. is like really elongated and this is almost spherical. Look at just the vertical. Yeah, look at there. the actual dimensions here where this yeah. is really just smooth, again, same aperture, same focal length. Wow. This is just a matter of design decisions from, wow. from Leica. It's interesting. Um, Can you say it's almost a Sumalux rendering? Yeah, it's, it, it is. It's getting it there. is. Getting there. It, I don't, I don't want to discredit the Sumaluxes, but I think that this is the most Sumalux Sumacron that I have seen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a ridiculous sentence to that say. Is, that is, you said it though. That is, that is what I have to say about it. I really, these, these words are spoken. You know, I'm just continuing to be impressed by how different these lenses are than what we have now, which is what you want to see. When Leica comes out with a new lens, if you watch the 35 Sumalux episode, the FLE2 renders almost exactly the same as the FLE1. Well, it's, it's the not same a, Not a bad right, thing, right. right. But my point being is, now we get a new lens that renders like nothing else. Yeah. Which is pretty sweet. Which yeah. is something we don't see that often. And given how new the SL system is and how fresh it is, I think that's particularly interesting. They've done a good um, job. And it also means that these lenses make really nice companions to Apo SLs. Or zooms. Or zooms. Yeah. That would actually, I think it's a perfect companion to zooms, but even to the yeah. Apo SLs, if you had, well, let's say you have a 24 to 90. These would be good for that. You I could see, I could see yeah. having a 35 or a 50 yeah. as a lightweight, out and about companion lens, or again, you want to shoot friends and family. Mm -hmm. Well, this would be, if that you were if you were doing a, a landscape trip and you wanted to bring your 24 to 90, mm -hmm. maybe your 90 to 80, but you wanted a smaller kit that you could walk around like a city with. Sure. In the past, I may have recommended an M lens, like a 50 cron or a 35 cron, or the 24 to 70, or the 24 to 70. Yeah. But I probably wouldn't say bring to bring both zooms no, if you're traveling no, no, no. internationally. But now, what I'd recommend is one of these new Supercron XLs, which is as light as an M lens, yes, basically, almost with the well with the adapter. It is true. Yeah, um, yeah. Because yeah, actually... remember, you got to have right. the adapter on there as well. Because with the M adapter um, L, yeah, is that that's gonna like, be more I than weigh the thirty five Cron. Um, at thirty five Super Cron with M adapter L is three hundred thirty two grams. So it's only a thirty gram difference. That's Between that's this, nothing. Right. But you're, of course, you're getting all the benefits of an SL lens. So I think these are the new zoom oh. companions, especially for travel because they're so light. I'd probably use them without the hood, just super small, super basic. You know, yeah. minimize the weight, and I think it's a great option. I think so too. If you and if you're on the fence about a backup body, maybe you're thinking about getting an SL2S to compare uh, pair with your SL2, or vice versa. Maybe you're thinking about an SL2. 
get one of the bundles. It costs almost nothing. You're getting one of these lenses for 700 bucks. Yeah. And let's say a year goes by and you just change your kit. Well, you've already basically depreciated <laughs> because you right. take so much right, money right, out of the right, bundle. So right. I think there's a lot of use case for the bundles and I did a lot right. of use case for these new primes as companions to zooms in lieu, especially of mm. M lenses where I would have maybe recommended those before. Sure. But you, you give but the, up a lot. The drawback of the M lens, yeah. especially when you're pairing it with the SL, mm -hmm. and they are phenomenal lenses, mm -hmm. but you're giving up weather sealing. You're giving up autofocus, right? So one of the advantages, or those are two big, let's say, two yeah. big advantages of the SL system is the weather sealing and is the autofocus and having yeah. that convenience. And also just being able to control the aperture from the body to be able to do um, full program mode if you want full auto. To have that hyper focus, um, scale focus on the top screen, which you also, don't get. Multi shot. Multi shot. Well, you can get multi shot with M lenses, just not with TL lenses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So don't right, worry right. about that one. All right, shh, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's okay. It's been a long day. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so, I, I, I would love to see more focal lengths like this come out for the mm -hmm. SLs. I'd love to have a set of Apo SLs and a set of non Apo SLs. I think that's how we're going. I hope so. I think that's the direction we're headed. That'd and be really uh, cool. you know. Still want to see certain other Apple's. Yeah, we though. obviously, I mean, yeah, we can talk about that briefly. Mm. We were promised a 21 and a 24 Apo SL. Two years ago. Uh, Wait, no, two, three like years four. ago. Three Several, years ago. multiple versions of one year. <laughs> one year multiplied by a number greater than one. Years ago, we were promised these lenses. We haven't yes. seen them yet. I don't think that lenses made outside of the Vetzlar factory are going to dramatically impact deliveries of no, those. No, I don't think so. I have to assume it's some kind of production issue or something. Design issue. Design issue. Yeah. I mean, I remember how insanely difficult it was to get the Apo, any of the Apo primes. Oh, yeah. Remember the 35? Oh, yeah. Came yeah, out? yeah, yeah, yeah. Years to get it. Yeah. So maybe they learned their lesson. Probably not. Oh, uh, and they're, they're, not... they're stockpiling <laughs> all, all five of them. So, yeah, we obviously <laughs> we, but again, I'm not, I don't sit here thinking like, well, why are they making yeah. these lenses when they should be making you know, They're made in separate countries. Yes. So by separate teams. So it's not, I don't think there's a lot of like, oh, well, now that these came out, you know, we'll all forget about the 21. No, they, they get it. Um, same thing with the 100 to 400. It's not made at the factory in Germany. I don't think it's pulling a lot of resources. If anything, it's helping because by expanding the portfolio and giving more customers more opportunities to spend money, let's yeah. be real, Leica has to make a profit to stay around making black paint cameras for me. Um, <laughs> you know, that gives them the resources they need to develop that's the, the crazy, that's the only reason. Yeah, that's, that's the only reason. reason yeah. To develop these incredible Apple lenses and these yes. super exotic lenses as well. So I'm... I'm happy with the direction they're going in. I mean, I'm there's never happy look, with There's supply. room for both. Yeah. There's room for oh, both. Oh, yeah. Well, we've, I think we've demonstrated that, that there's clearly, just like for years with M lenses, you've mm -hmm. had Sumerit, Sumacron, Sumalux, yeah. Noctilux. How many 50s are there in the lineup? Like about 87. Right. So there's a lot of precedent for a line. Yes. For a lens line. Right. Look, we're, we're holding one right here. Yeah. How many 35 M lenses yeah. are there? Well, they did get into some of our favorites one, but... Um, yeah, yeah, but there's four. 35 Sumerit, RIP, 35, 35 Sumacron, mm -hmm. 35 Sumalux, yep. 35 Apple Sumacron. Yes, and version one steel rim. Oh, and the steel rim. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, does yeah. that really count? Okay, yeah, fine. of course. It's a production lens. <laughs> okay, fair. Um, so these are all different choices that we have, right? Mm -hmm. And you could say the same in the 50, right? So uh, we got the, you, Sumacron, we used to have Sumacron, Sumacron, Sumacron yep. Sumalux, yes. Apple, yes. Noctilux. And 1.2 Noctilux. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got a nice range there as well. Right. So I don't think anyone's saying, oh my gosh, there's uh, now that they're making one different 50 millimeter M lens, like all the others go out the window. No. And what did we see? You know, I, actually, we were reflecting on this, the uh, how fun it was to do the, the show us your Leica kit. Yeah. How many Leica kits had multiple variants of 35s and 50s that we saw? Like it was a lot. There was a lot of people who had multiple lenses, whether it was a Sumacron and an Octolux, Sumacron and a, and a Sumalux. And I think I think the SL, as it develops, as it matures, is allowing for more space. It's allowing mm -hmm. for more variety I like it. and choosing the right tool for what you want to accomplish. I'm laughing because Subash says, would a non-Apple 75M Sumacron SL draw similar to a 75 Sumalux M? I would say, I hope not. The 75 Sumalux is not um, no. sharp. <laughs> well, say what you mean, Josh. It's fun, yeah. but I don't think like I think like is the design philosophy for new lenses gets away from that. Yes, That's what the does. classic series is for. Right. Now, if they reissued mm. a 75 Sumalux, that could be interesting. That would be sweet. If, that would be. If anyone from Leica is watching this, can you please do a classic series? Wow. But make it like the version one with a removable shade, and make it in silver chrome, 
please. Wow. And black paint too. And, and black paint. <laughs> and black paint. Ah, it's nice to it's nice to have dreams. Um, ah. I want to make sure because we have a little bit of time. What we, do we show got? on the CL. Oh yeah, yeah. Here, because we haven't actually shown da, da, da. visually how these lenses look on the CL. One, and I also didn't test any of them against the 3514 TL lens. I didn't really think that was relevant because they no. don't make them anymore. I don't think so. And also because it's not a full frame lens. But but this is fascinating. Take look a look at the take, size. Yeah. yeah, take a look Can at this. Close up on that. Uh, I don't know if I'm focused. Jose, am closer. I in focus? You got it closer. No, closer. Oh, forward. Yeah. There you go. All right. So what I have here is this is my 35 Sumalux TL lens. And this is the 35 Summicron SL. And uh, one, this one here is an APS-C lens, crop sensor, and this is a full frame lens. They are remarkably close in size. This is a 60 millimeter filter thread and this is a 67 millimeter filter thread. Um, uh, yes, this is a 1.4 and this is an F2, but all things considered. I, I'm, what's actually surprising is how much is I, that I actually, I think way? the Sumalux is actually heavier. Well, I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, but uh, here, here we go. So let me uh, let me throw this on here as we were socking. So this is my CL. It is 428 grams, so it actually it is, is heavier. heavier. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Look at that. That, that is, is well, you know what? It's it's lighter. Yeah, it's a lighter. Lot of, it's a hundred twenty five percent lighter. More than this that. is a great CL lens. Oh, now you did it. Oh no, no. You know what? I for did. anyone who's who's um, Crying like us, like us, about the discontinuation wow. of the feel, feel lenses. Feel this, because we haven't tried this Ooh, before right now. Ooh, this is really nice. Really this balance nice. is better. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the yeah, the lens is a little bit bigger, but I think with the hang grip on here, super nice, and maybe a thumb support. This would be and a really nice combo. What is the thing that we always loved about the 35 TL lens? How close it focuses? 0.3 meters. That's right. And this focuses even closer. Even and your battery is a dead battery in this camera. Of course, there is. That's okay. Um, Interesting, right? New favorite CL lens. Ooh, maybe. Thinking about it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, that, I shouldn't be saying that because these are so hard to get right now. But that will change. But yeah, I think, Dave, this is great. This is a super viable really option cool, for right? the CL. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I like it and, a lot. And you can get them, whereas the 3514s, there's some new ones left. Yes, but when they're gone, they're gone. Um, and also, if you had an SL system right. and a CL system, that makes for a great This makes a lot lens. more. This makes exactly. more sense than any other SL lens that exists to go between the two. I agree. Because it's finally a lens that's equal or in fact smaller yes. and lighter, or I'll say not smaller, but lighter, lighter, lighter. than a native CL lens. Yes. Because previously I would say, oh, I like using the 3514 TL on my SL2 because it's small and light, but now right. I'm going to use this because it's lighter. Wow. Remember that. Hmm. If you rewind, <laughs> If you rewind us in the episodes, Josh has often recommended using TL lenses on an SL2. Mm -hmm. To get a lighter kit, and then the sacrifice there is going down to 20 megapixels on the SL2. Mm -hmm. But if you could just use the new Summicron lens on a CL body yeah. and share it with an SL, you're getting full resolution on yeah. both. Yeah, that this is, is really interesting. I am going. At, really you know what? As much as I now should have, my next test will be mm -hmm. on the CL. 3514 TL Ooh. and 35 Summicron non apo SL. I'm actually going to do that. I like that. Sometime in the next few weeks. So one of these future episodes, I'll throw it in. Just I'll mention what, what the results because that actually is very interesting to me. They, I don't know. Can they see the light bulbs? Yeah. This is, yeah. This is really. I, I didn't think about this. Now I didn't even realize no. that the new lens is lighter than the TL lens. No. This basically, the only thing that we talked about before this episode was. Uh, hey David, can you can you bring your can you bring your CL? Yeah, that was it. That was like, it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just bring my CL yeah. and we'll throw it on there and see yeah. what it looks like. Yeah. So this yeah. is the first time we've seen it. On. it. And, now of course you're giving up a yeah. stop of aperture, so I'm not saying it's perfect, perfect but it's but not bad. It's available yes. and it's it's a no compromises lens on yes. both cameras. Where if you use the 3514 TL, you're compromising on exactly. the SL cameras. Exactly. Props the center right. So this exactly. is this is okay. interesting. This is really interesting. Okay. This is really interesting. Um, and, stay tuned and for that. So. No, the CL doesn't need firmware. The lens works no, no, no. fine. Uh, so the 35, well, we don't know that. I just, no, it was on and long oh, enough okay. for me to use it, yes. So the 35 would be a 50 equivalent on here. And then if we threw on the 50... Mm, that'd be a nice 75. Yeah, 75. Again, nice, really nice portrait lens. And we already know how pleasing the rendering is on this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This could be a really yeah, interesting uh, portrait a lens. a 75 F2 portrait lens with that yeah, bokeh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm if that. you own one of these fifties, or if you're on the list and you end up getting one and you have a CL, send me a portrait you took with it because I would love to see how this does. I think it. I. You know. I think it could really benefit from the hand grip, the balance on here. Yeah. I just. I think the hand grip in general is well because you also use the whole thing SL two because yeah, which or, is, or thumbs up. Yeah. Or both. Or both. Yeah. That's really nice. That's really nice. Mm, okay. I'm like digging that. it. I'm like digging that. it. I'm like. I'm liking this. Okay. This is. Oh, they need to get a close up. Um. Yeah. Can we do that? Mm. Let's see. Going, going, <laughs> going, going. There, there we go. Yeah, move it up forward. That's really, that's really nice. Like, yeah. that is really nice. Good. That's a good match. Yeah, yeah. And it's not heavy. Like, it's yeah. not. Front yeah, it's heavy. not like it's pulling it forward like using an Apo would be. Yeah, when you use an Apo SL lens on here, it definitely pulls forward because the body's so small and light. But that that's a nice okay. It's a nice balance. I'm really glad you crawled out of the studio to grab that CL. <laughs> I, I mean, he literally did. Literally, literally, he literally crawled out of the studio on his yeah, hand. That's I why went, I, I went got all excited. <laughs> he's sleeping under the table. He's like, oh, here. there's someone down here. No, right, very exciting. Wow, that's cool. I think we are doing great on time. So let's question. see if there's any questions that we haven't answered, or or if you want to throw us a question before we sign off, um, please do. Yes, let's do it. For some reason, people want to see a 40 millimeter lens. <laughs> Uh, why? Why? What's wrong with the 35? 35, 35 it's 5 like, millimeters. Just crop, people. Just crop. It's crop. Come uh, on. Yeah, no software. A firmware up they need it. No. Nope. Nope. Is there a macro adapter for the new 50? No. 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 Micro we have adapters. a macro episode if you want to dive into that. I mean, te technically, you could use like a 500D diopter or something like that. Who knows if how that would work? wanted to, yeah. but we've not tried that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Why do you people want a 40? No, no. The Leica has enough stuff on their plate. 35. No, give them another 35 and crop in just 5%. Crop yeah, right. I, I will sell you a crop. I will sell you a Lightroom preset <laughs> for $9.95 <laughs> that crops automatically all your 35 shots into a 40. And I'll call the preset the Sumacron C. Ooh, preset. look at that. Send your money now. Yeah. Yeah. Josh at paymenow.com. That's what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> he takes Venmo, and, <laughs> Venmo, uh, Cash App, Zelle, <laughs> Bitcoin. Uh, Jose, I got Jose for that. Yeah, yeah, whatever you, whatever, whatever you, whatever you need. What, um, what else, Jose? I don't think there was any other question. No, no. How could there be no questions? Everyone's just so blown away by wow. our unbelievably comprehensive episode about these two lenses well, that they'll shots. only ask us questions tomorrow after they've they, right, they right, 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 right. Like the elevator test shots a lot, you know. So. Good. I love my elevator room test shots because I think that it allows you to see. What a test that you could do at home. Right? Literally, you got those test charts online. Yes. They're gaffer taped to the wall, the outside the bathroom. If you've been in the store, you know that. And <laughs> but it works great because it shows you. We, in the real we actually world. had a, a couple people came up to us and be <laughs> like, "Oh event, my yeah. gosh, I went into the bathroom and oh, I saw the elevator door." We're like, "Yep, yep." Oh my! I thought it was bigger. We're like, "No, it's not bigger. <laughs> it's it's pretty yeah, tiny. It's a very small, <laughs> but it works because you know we're not trying to make some." unattainable, lab-controlled, super scientific, fancy test results because it doesn't really reflect how the lenses are going to be used in the real world. Instead, I'm just hanging out in the store on a Saturday afternoon yeah. doing all kinds of crazy photos of camera bags and test charts. So yeah, it's fun for me, um, and I'm, I'm happy to do it because it gives me the amount of insight that I can get when I'm using maybe eight lenses in a row a lot, just bouncing them between. I'm getting a feel for the focus rings, for the mounting, for the size, the handling is really what I need to do this kind of show because sure. most people don't have access. I know a few that so, do, but so most people don't have access to all these lenses at the same time with an entire day dedicated just to testing them. So that's kind of what this is all about. I feel I, like- I think also, yes. it because this is something you mentioned to me when we were first going over the results is just how well the the 2490 continues to, to perform mm -hmm. in these tests that it, it's, Pretty surprising. Yeah. Well, I think key takeaways. Yeah. Let's, let's number go over one, that. how small and light these lenses are. Ridiculous. Is fantastic. Yeah. Number two, a level of performance that splits the difference between the zooms and M lenses. It gives you Sumalux like bokeh almost, very distinct. Number three, how is how good the 24 to 90 is. Always. How good the Apples are, meaning there's nothing better. No, I mean, nothing even close. And I, but I think yeah. what an interesting opportunity it is to get a small and light. SL lens yes. as a companion to the zooms, as a replacement for adapted M lenses, mm -hmm. or just as a, the lightest available solution for the SL system. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, it's great. We got choice. Yeah, somebody said, I thought TL lenses were designed for more resolution than any other Leica lenses. Well, okay. That's let me, SL. Let me back that up. Yes, when they were first designed, the TL lenses 
were the highest resolving lenses that Leica had made because the sensor was small and the pixels mm -hmm. are small, mm -hmm. and they wanted to leave room to grow for the sensor resolution. Yes? How'd that go? It's going great. <laughs> so, whoops, whoopsie. Uh, it's going great. So, these were the first Leica lenses designed to 60 line pairs per line pairs per millimeter design spec, mm. where they could actually resolve greater than 50 or 60 percent contrast, wide open at 60 line pairs per millimeter which prior to that, they only designed to 40 line pairs per millimeter. That doesn't sound like an awful lot, but that's a 50% increase in resolution. It's pretty significant, actually. The SL lenses, the first being the 24 to 90, were designed to the same 60 line pairs per millimeter spec that the TL lenses first were. Mm -hmm. Without the TL lenses, because remember, TL and CL was the first iterations of the L mount. Yeah, the original T. The original T701 is mm -hmm. the first L mount camera. And that got carried through into the full frame L mount, the SL lenses. And the 24 to 90 is the first instance of that. Then we saw the, the 90 to 280, which was just, again, stunningly outperforms just about any telephoto, which I guess we're going to test in our next Yeah, episode. so for people asking about the 100 yeah. to 400, we, well, we do don't that. have it yet. No, but okay. we will. We when will. we do have it and we test it, we will do a show on it. Really? I promise you we will do a show on it. <laughs> yes. But we don't have it yet, so we can't test it yet. Hang it, in there. This is also very interesting, especially in, in my neck, my realm, which is in landscape photography. Mm -hmm. The 9280, I love it to death. But man, is it heavy. Kevin says, has a, a, an idea for my new uh, Leica Star Miami themed smoothie, lime pears per millimeter. It's going to be a lime and pear smoothie. We're going to call it the lime pears per millimeter. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, or, or the apple. Or we talking about the, the apple, apple. The apple Sumacron. The apple Sumacron smoothie. <laughs> the out. Yeah. It's we're, like right open up a, we're gonna open up a juice bar inside the store, <laughs> and it's gonna be all like a theme drinks based on things that I have said incorrectly. This is on the so show. nerdy. Yeah. This is so apple apple Sumacron. The old apple Sumacron smoothie. It's good for you. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think we did it. Yeah. I feel good. Um, if you want to grab that super awesome stainless steel 35 uh, limited edition, which is already packed away, it is on the website. If you have any questions about, look how pretty the packaging is too. I mean, it's beautiful. Come on. It doesn't come with a box. What do you want from me? You know how well packaged this is? Like six layers. It's extremely um, well packaged. Yeah. Anyway, you want to sign us off? We got all the questions. I think so. Yeah. I we got I can't read that far away. So yeah, uh, with my old older eyes. So I'm just going to trust that there's no other questions. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, hopefully you found this enlightening entertaining and educational hope uh if you did please hit that thumbs up button subscribe to red dot forum youtube channel if you haven't already because you should and click the notification bell so you know when we post new content like this awesome video mm -hmm. or like the 100 to 400 mm -hmm. when that comes out when eventually. that comes out eventually uh, eventually uh we will be back soon ish with another episode because i think we're at some point i don't know when we're back we're back. Kirsten soon. probably knows. Yes, Sometime eventually. In April, I think. Sometime this year, we're we're gonna be back. Uh, <laughs> we probably before I go to Iceland, which is in a month. So I'm guessing okay. a episode is gonna happen before then. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll even take a 100 to 400 with me to Ooh, Iceland. You should do that. Maybe you should fun. do that. Okay. Should do that. High expectations now. Only the best. Um, yes. If you want to see other episodes of Red Form Camera Talk, which, what, 66? We're almost at 60. We're almost at 60. 60 59, 58, something like really? that. Really? Yeah, wow, we're not okay. quite Because 60 will be our next Ask Us Anything. Right. So. Almost 60 episodes of Red Form Camera Talk. You can, we've got playlists in our uh, YouTube account page there, whatever that's called. Uh, channel. Channel. <laughs> channel page. Yeah. And you can see that either all the videos in date order, or you can dial in to, let's say, SL videos, M videos, et cetera. Uh, everything is organized into playlists for your easy viewing. And uh, be sure to check out red.forum.com, the website for longer form written content, say like uh, M11 review, or for instance, the Apo Simicron SL reviews that we've done, mm -hmm. um, or the 9280, et cetera. All also, good stuff. Also, uh, up to date firmware and news articles all that on red.forum.com mm -hmm. that we don't do on video. Uh, there have been firmware updates for the M11, SL2, yes. and SL2S recently. I'm just throwing it in that. there before we get to Thank mention. So you. check on red.forum.com for links to download the firmware, instructions, explanations of what's changed. So that's on there. Something relevant. Yes. And I think that covers that there. We're done. 
We're done. Uh, you can also check out Red Dot Forum on Apple News, wherever you check that, because I always have to throw that in there. Mm -hmm. Big thanks to Josh. He spent many, many, many hours yes. doing in-depth testing. Far too many. For your viewing pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Jose for keeping track of all of our insane camera angle switches and dizzying close-ups. Um, always a big thanks to Jose for keeping us looking good and looking sharp. And thanks to you for tuning in. Uh, because without you, we wouldn't be here. We'd be sleeping or watching a movie. Probably true. Yeah, probably true. <laughs> uh, so thank you and have a good evening. We will see you in the next episode. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night.